NC State and Georgia Tech were off last Saturday. They played the prior Saturday with State losing to Carolina by seven in Raleigh and Georgia Tech being demolished by Virginia Tech 51 to seven John Durante does it all he punts he plays kicks and kicks off he'll start the game with Chris Woods back deep to receive for Tech important game for Atlanta off we go in the ACC a strong leg by Durante and Woods oh. choosing to take it out does not get to the 20-yard line. Brought down on special teams. So it'll be a long field for Georgia Tech. After the tackle by Ernest Jones on these Bud Light starting lines, Mario Williams and Manny Lawson watch the ends. They are very, very talented. NFL ability in both of these guys. As for the linebackers, Stephen Tullock, top tackler on this team. Matter of fact, he's second in the country in tackles with Hoyt and Rumpf. In the secondary, a lot of changeover in personnel. Kirk mentioned in the open, number one, Marcus Hudson, he's going to do a lot of following of Calvin Johnson tonight with Davis Heath and Scott the rest of the second half. Home team starts the drive from the 18. Ball to Johnson right away. Gain of 11. First down at the 29-yard line. And right away, 21 gets his number called. Like last year, Calvin Johnson is a true freshman lined up as a flanker on every snap for Georgia Tech. Now with a year under his belt, you're going to see Georgia Tech move him around. Here he is in the slot. North Carolina State comes with a blitz. Quick slant, finding Calvin Johnson, and they will move him around. It makes it much tougher on a defense to locate Calvin Johnson because of the way they, he's become more versatile. First down, P.J. Daniels has about five a carry this year. Manny Lawson's arms waiting. To close that play off from the outside for no game. Miguel Scott popping his head in there well as well. Lawson, four sacks, five tackles for loss for the season. Three of those sacks coming in the loss to North Carolina last week. Like you can look all over the country, and you know, we watch all of these teams every single week. It's hard to find two defensive ends with as much athletic ability as Mario Williams and Manny Lawson. They give great pressure off the edges for this Wolfpack defense. And they're tall, 6'6 six, six and 6'7. Six, Might be tough for the quarterback ball who's listed at 5'11. He goes deep this time. Bilbo broke off the route and the pass is incomplete. Marcus Hudson is over there on coverage. What about the edges for both teams tonight? Kirk's Under Armour advantage when the Tech Yellow Jackets have the ball. Disadvantage here, third and 11. Here comes seven Wolfpack players up top for Johnson. Couldn't haul it in with one hand. The Georgia Tech side wanted pass interference, but A.J. Davis comes over, plays corner that time, and the 5'10 junior makes the play. Well, so we're talking so much about Hudson because he's a big physical corner, and the North Carolina State coaches talked about moving him around with the, the bigger receiver, Calvin Johnson. This time, Pete, A.J. Davis, 5'10", 190 pounds, stays step for step. It would have been a great catch there by Johnson, but Davis showing that he can get physical and has the speed to stay with a big receiver. Darrell Blackman with the ACC last year, third nationally in returns. They came after Ben Arndt and almost got a roughing the kicker penalty. They ran right under Arndt's leg. It'll be down to the 36, so the pressure forces the kick out quick. It's only 36 yards for the senior punter out of Georgia. All right, so here comes NC State, the Bud Light starting lineups. Jay Davis is their quarterback, living in the shadow of Phillip Rivers last year. Didn't do all that bad. Jermaine Hall, Tony Baker, a really good back, we will see. As for the receivers, nobody breaks the game open. But T.J. Williams, the tight end, may be the most important threat. As for the guys up front, newbie, Happy Harris, Herndon, and Morris. We highlight Leroy Harris, a former wrestler, making his 24th start here tonight. First carry, Baker. All kinds of trouble. The attacking Georgia Tech defense shuts him down. Chris Reese eventually cleaning up after K. Michael Hall and Philip Wheeler did the work. Tech up front without Eric Henderson. Darrell Robertson starts with Mansfield Roto. Joe Anawaii sounds like Hawaii. Playing pretty well, too. Adam Oliver, speed rusher. Backers, Hall, Jarris Wilkinson, their top tackler, and Philip Wheeler. Here is the toss on second and 14 out of the no huddle. Only a gain of about two for Baker, that swarming Georgia Tech defense with Wheeler and Chris Reese getting it done. You know, the safeties play such a huge role in this attacking 
blitzing defense with Chris Reese and Dewan Landry bring a lot of responsibility along with ability. That is Davis and Kenny Scott play the corners. Mike, we've been doing Georgia Tech on Thursday night for a long time, and we talk a lot about Georgia Tech's defense. John Tenuta, not the best way to start things off for North Carolina State against this kind of scheme now in third and long. Third and 14, Williams, the tight end, lined up closest to you. Davis hit as he threw, and looks like it's intercepted. They're discussing right now. It is picked off for Georgia Tech by Phillip Wheeler. Davis, the quarterback, had his arm hit when he threw. The pressure of John Tanuta's defense forces a turnover again. 14th time this year. Mike, we'll have to look to see if this is an interception, but the zone blitz package, you have no idea as an offensive line where it's coming from. And Jarris Wilkinson, the middle linebacker, gets the pressure. Great effort there by Phillip Wheeler, the outside linebacker. But it is a lot of pressure on the North Carolina State offensive line. And let's see if Wheeler, I, that ball looks like it touched. But Georgia Tech's going to get the snap off and it's going to count. They do, so the play will stand as an interception. P.J. Daniels gets three yards. Now, let me just inform somebody, because someone stopped me in an airport and asked me about instant replay this week. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> it's nice. It was 6 in the morning. I had my coffee. I was all right. Good. Good. You see the replay booth up there. They look at the plays before the replay comes up. They have the ability to go to the game angle and look. If there's any question, they can stop it on their own before they see a bunch of replays. There you see how it was close and the ball made contact with the ground as it was secured by the linebacker Wheeler. Doesn't matter. Tech is giving the offense the ball often this year. Flag is down as ball is flushed and gets rid of it. He got out of the tackle box. The pressure coming from uh, up front. Check out, see if uh, well, State got over there first. Well, no, it, it rumped the, uh, mm -hmm. the outside linebacker, not only lined up offside, but started to move forward. This early start to this game <laughs> for North Carolina State, for as much talk as they're talking about not self-destructing. On the defense, number 29. Five-yard penalty is still second down. Little rump. See, they, they've, they've had the North Carolina game not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, they've had so many opportunities at practice to talk about correcting the mental mistakes. Let's not put ourselves in a bad situation. They've had the interception, a penalty. Now Georgia Tech getting deeper into their territory, second and short. It's exactly what, uh, what Chuck Amato has been talking about. Exactly what he told Rob Stone before the game. P.J. Daniels makes the first man miss. Gets the first down. Gain of five of the 25 before Manny Lawson stopped Daniels, who a couple of years ago had a 1,447-yard year, was first-team All-ACC, missed four games last year with a knee and hamstring injury. Mike, when you play this kind of pressure, pressure defense, you got to make the tackle right there. Hoyt, the middle linebacker, who's the number two tackler on this defense, is in perfect position to make a tackle. But Daniels, because he's a talented back, slipped around Hoyt, and there's nobody left after the linebackers and the safeties are attacking the line of scrimmage the way they are. On first down, Calvin Johnson left free on the other side of the play. Designed run for Ball, who scoots out of bounds for about three yards. Mario Williams shows him the sideline. And there, there you get a good size difference right there. Mario Williams, the defensive end, 6'7". Good old Reggie Ball listed at 5'11". Reggie Ball is healthy. You know, there, there's so much uh, concern about Reggie Reggie Ball and his health. You know, he, he had a, you know, such a, a difficult situation with the viral meningitis. He missed a UConn game, and didn't practice leading up to the Virginia Tech game. He's had some time now, and Reggie Ball is having a phenomenal football season if you take away that Virginia Tech game. From the 22, he's looking Johnson's way. He sets and tosses to Calvin, who makes the catch, stays in bounds. And goes out at the 10. The market at the 10, a gain of 12, and a first down for the sophomore receiver. Chan Gailey right now, Mike, is doing a good job of mixing up the play calling. There's enough of a run, play action, the bootleg, and the arm strength of Reggie Ball. There's never been any question in the last three years about Reggie Ball. You can talk about his size, but when it comes to his arm strength, he can deliver the football with a lot of velocity and plenty of accuracy. And when you've got a big receiver like that, they're going to continue to try to find him isolated one-on-one -on -one against these corners. Jimmy Sutton was in coverage there. First and 10. 
The fake to Bilbo. He lost the ball, and the Wolfpack recover. Now, Reggie Ball is trying to say it was an incomplete forward pass. My arm was going forward. The referee, Jack Childress, says it's North Carolina State ball. There is no flag on the play. The ruling on the field is a fumble. Jack went to grab his beanbag, instead yeah. grabbed his flag. That's why it came out. Now, when you watch the replay, look for the empty hand coming forward. If the hand is empty, that means the ball came out and is a fumble. Reggie Ball is trying to state his case, but the ball slipped out of his hand, I think, before the arm started to come forward. And this will be reviewed upstairs. So we'll take a peek at it. And the replay booth is busy. It seems like every third play that we have on Thursday nights has been reviewed. I mean, that's we had a lot out in the Mountain West that's, last month. That's, that's how we start the first quarter. Now here's a peek at it again. I think that's a fumble. Yeah, the ball looks like it, it came out. This is another one of those, you and I like to say, depending on who you're a fan of, will tell you your opinion. But the ball, to me, Looks like it came out. He lost control of the ball. And I think it should be North Carolina State's ball. But Mike, I want to say one thing about Reggie Ball because he, he was a, a, a quarterback last year. He started as a, as a true freshman in 2003. He was the ACC Rookie of the Year. Followed up last year. He had 18 interceptions. And a lot of people thought, well, what's wrong with Reggie Ball? In my opinion, he was just forcing things too much. And the ball looks like, definitely looks like it, uh, it's coming out. He makes the effort to go back and grab and it. And that's what's going to backfire on him in the video. Right. <laughs> the effort to try to realize that it slipped out of his hand uh, instead of coming forward and throwing an incompletion. But I want to say about Reggie, 18 interceptions last year. A lot of people panicked about what's wrong with this guy. If anything, he tried to do too many things because of a confidence that he had in himself. This year, the completion percentage is down. A lot of that has to do with the way their offense struggled against Virginia Tech. They were overmatched in that game up front in the trenches, and his numbers were affected, and the entire offense uh, was affected that day. But overall, the maturity that he is that he has now, this is third year as a starter. Is, I just think, in my opinion, you're starting to see a guy mature and, and not try to do too much. Here's the answer. Oh, oh rule the forward okay. pass. The microphone is not working, so... Again, the referee doesn't call it. It's up to the replay booth and the technical advisor who felt that, that was a forward pass. And it's ruled incomplete, so it's second down. The Georgia Tech catches a break, and again, that's the beauty of replay. If you have a chance for people upstairs to look at it and evaluate it, you and I looked at it, we thought it was a fumble. I thought the ball slipped out of his hand there, there before a lot of, his arm came forward. Me too. A lot of interpretation. We saw the play in the Michigan-Michigan State game. It was run back by Pecco, the defensive lineman, for a touchdown. People are still not sure exactly if that was a pass or not. Same here. In any case, incomplete pass, second down, and here is Ball, pressured as he throws for Johnson, incomplete. Calvin Johnson started that play on the other side, came all the way across as Reggie bought some time. We'll have third down coming up. North Carolina State is a team that plays a ton of man coverage, and there's Marcus Hudson trailing and following Johnson, but you can see the safety, Garland Heath, also coming over to assist against a talented wide receiver. When Once Georgia Tech gets down into the red zone because of the size, the ability to go up into the air, they're always looking to get the football to red to uh, Calvin Johnson. This time he's lined up at the top in the slot, and you can see the safety right behind to try to help out. Third and ten. Ball looks that way. Incomplete. A terrific read on defense by Miguel Scott, the safety. He saw it wasn't going to Calvin Johnson. And had a chance for the big hit, and he got it under Marius Bilbo. Big stop by the defense here for North Carolina State after not getting the fumble getting forced to go back on the field and Mike you you you're exactly right Miguel Scott after his scouting report all week says the ball is going to Calvin Johnson it's going to Calvin Johnson he came right off of Calvin Johnson and made the big hit on Bilbo for the incompletion Travis Bell good kicker struggling as he's missed his last three from 27 yards Ooh, missed it to the right so North Carolina State, some might say, get what they deserve because they should have had the ball in a turnover. 
Bell misses his fourth in a row. What a great game. We're lucky to have that one on primetime on Saturday. T.J. Williams, big tight end, might make some big plays tonight. Took it just shy of the 30. Yeah, it'll be very close to a first down. As T.J. holds in his 15th of the year. That's one way to try to attack this zone blitz scheme. And we say, you always hear zone blitz. Zone blitz the last seven years, we always talk about it. But John Tenuta literally has a zone blitz called either every play or every other play. He, and, it's, and we'll talk more about the responsibilities and why he likes doing it so much. Here is the give to Tony Baker. Pitch it across the 35, and the freshman, All-American in high school, picks up a first down easily with about 10 yards there. Give him 11 officially. I like Baker. I like the look of this freshman, and I, I like the courage that he showed in being recruited by almost every school in the country. And he looked at that depth chart and he said, you know what, I'm still going to go to North Carolina State despite Daryl Blackman being there and the fact that Reggie Davis and Bobby Washington and they're recruiting Andre Brown. I'm going to go there. I'm confident. And how about the surge that time by the offensive line to give Tony Baker some, some room to be able to explode into the offensive line and pick up some yardage. See what impact he's had in the last couple of games. Jay Davis throws it. It is caught by Brian Clark who gets across midfield and is taken out of bounds at the 40. Nice job to Clark, a pickup of 20. Chris Reese steered him out of bounds. One thing we've seen so far from NC State, Mark Tressman, the offensive coordinator, is getting back get, and getting rid of the football in this series. It's one of the ways to try to slow down an attacking defense is the quick count and then getting. back and delivering the football and that's something that coach Tressman who's coming in from the NFL Mike is very well aware of getting rid of the ball it helps your quarterback 22 NFL seasons eight different staffs a little razzle dazzle watch the backside Davis hit as he tosses open is Clark touchdown North Carolina State that play was a tenth of a second from not working but Davis unloads it 40 yards and hits Brian Clark the senior for his first touchdown of the year. Mike, it's amazing to see how the emotions of college football can turn around as quickly as they do sometimes. Mm. North Carolina State, the missed field goal. Georgia Tech safety's coming up in support. And then by the time he realizes what's, uh, what's happening, it's a touchdown for North Carolina State. Big Dur turn of events. Duraney adds the extra point. The Wolfpack score first here in Atlanta. Godway, named after the 1952 National Championship winning coach here at Georgia Tech. Tech down 7 0 after the 40 yard touchdown pass to Brian Clark. A nice throw by fellow Floridian senior Jay Davis for the score. This one over the head. Of Chris Woods and no return for Tech. Take you back to the touchdown. I thought it was interesting. John Tenuta, the defense coordinator from Georgia Tech, told us that one of the keys was getting pressure. And this is a little razzle dazzle, but right here you can see Landry, who's one of the better safeties in the ACC, coming up to stop Baker. And once he comes up, it's over. Now it's just a matter of time of Davis getting the ball off. And how about Brian Clark returning to the lineup? He missed a North Carolina game with the ankle sprain, comes back and makes a big play. This is the start that North Carolina State needed now that we're halfway through this first quarter. And they've kind of weathered that storm of the potential miscues that they made early in the game. Richie Ball back to work, puts it in the belly of P.J. Daniels, who broke the first tackle and turns no gain into a gain of eight. Well, the start of the game, we showed you the Georgia Tech lineup. The faces didn't correspond, so let's spin you through one more time so all the moms and all the friends can see Reggie Ball and Daniels and Mike Cox. We talked about the receivers that Calvin Johnson's so good, but Demarius Bilbo, who was a quarterback, is now accepting the role. Hey, I'm a wide receiver. I'm not going back to quarterback. And he's done a good job. And Kevin Tuminello, that center out of Youngstown, Ohio, is important. They have a freshman, three sophomores, and then Honeycutt, the senior, a tackle. But Tuminello, with all the stuff NC State can do, he's going to have to be key here tonight. Daniels almost made this a big run. He couldn't climb over his fullback, Mike Cox, but still gains a first down out at the 33-yard line. 
Mike, you and I were thinking the same thing because, again, I think North Carolina State's defense is so excited. Look, they've got nine guys right there. If Daniels hits that seam, uh, the, yeah. the, the Red Sea parks. I mean, he is running all the way to the uh, into the end zone. So North Carolina State is just going to try to beat up this young offensive line from Georgia Tech where they have three sophomores, a redshirt freshman, and one senior. They're young, and that's what they're going to try to attack. Mario Williams out of the game. Ronaldo Moses in a defensive end. Design run for ball. Terrific play. Waiting for him was Stephen Tullock, the junior out of Miami, top tackler on this team. As we mentioned before, sixth in the nation in tackles per game at 13 per. We're going to call Stephen Tullock's name a lot tonight. And he's one of the more athletic linebackers that uh, North Carolina State has. For him here in the open field, and I know it's tight, but the way he made that tackle, and you could feel the burst and the way he exploded into Reggie Ball. Tullock will be chasing Ball throughout this entire night. 19 tackles in the game 10 days ago against North Carolina. Ball throws too high for Demarius Bilbo, and the pass is incomplete. Trying to throw over everybody, Reggie Ball, now two of eight. Here in the first eight minutes and change tonight. Well, if he doesn't have a nice throwing window to be able to throw the football into, he's trying to throw over top of the front defensive line or linebackers. It becomes very, very tough for him to throw with accuracy. That is why people, especially in the NFL, you look at an NFL roster, go on to ESPN.com, go through the rosters, the NFL, all the quarterbacks, even the backups, they're 6'3, six, 6'4, six, and that's why. Because the throwing lane isn't always going to be there. You need it for long-term success. Here's Ball staying in there and throwing. A sliding incompletion. Bilbo tried to scoop it off the surface, but could not. Or rather, Pat Clark, not Demarius Bilbo. In any case, after the pressure from Mario Williams, they'll kick it away. So good job for NC State. Give up the ball in very good field position for Georgia Tech. Get the missed field goal. And here, after a score, they keep the energy going. A three and out. Now 10 at the line, ready to charge at Arndt. Nine come. Arndt gets away a turning kick. Tough to catch, but brought in by Darrell Blackman. This tackle at the 32-yard line by Chris Dunlop. The kick was 40. The return was five. After the last touchdown, Jay Davis back on the field when you come back. Back here in Atlanta, North Carolina State. Leading 7-0 here on College Football Primetime. The Wolfpack trying to even their record at 500. Their only victory is against Eastern Kentucky. First and 10 from the 32. Jay Davis, the quarterback, gives it to this exciting freshman, Tony Baker. 13 to the 45, a first down. Herbie, we were talking during the time. I won't go back to this touchdown. With this exciting Georgia Tech defense pressure, you're so close to a big play all the time. Chris Reese almost is going to come up maybe with a turnover, certainly a sack. And Jay Davis's arm is just high enough to release the ball. The timing is that close to a maybe a fumble, maybe a big sack. Instead, it's a touchdown. The angle that Reese took to Davis. Ooh, strong, straight up hit by Joe Anawaii. The junior out of Pensacola, Florida, the best defensive lineman playing right now for Tech, stones the running back for a loss of about three. Well, with the exception of, of the big play, and there are some plays at North Carolina State, they were able to get, get the ball off quick, and they were able to make some plays, but that is just slipping the block for a big guy just dominating the line of scrimmage. He's their best defensive lineman so far this year. State needs to get it to the 45. Davis tosses an open receiver. Can't haul it in. Sterling Hicks, the senior, did not make the catch. I don't think he would have made the first down anyway. But we're going to have a third down coming up. Jay Davis is a, is a quarterback. We were talking earlier about Reggie Paul and the experience that he's gained. Jay Davis is, is similar. Jay Davis had the unenviable task of filling the shoes of Philip Rivers, who was a legend in Raleigh. And I think that got to him a little bit. I think it really affected him. That and a banged up offensive line most of the year. But Jay Davis is a confident quarterback this year. And these players look to him for guidance in these kind of situations. Third and 13. Gets about four, and they'll kick it away. 
looks like the uh, low snap helped discombobulate a poor play anyway. Well, I think it was a low snap, but I also think there was confusion in the backfield. And I, I think that uh, you saw both backs turn to Jay Davis as he was barking the cadence out, and I think there was some confusion on who was supposed to come in and either take the ball or for the play fake. The punt by Duraney is fair caught. 13 yard line. Almost five seconds of hang time. So that does a good job. Pat Carter hauls in that 42 yard kick. Well, the ACC, 12 teams, as you know. Let's check the Dr. Pepper ACC update. The standings here in the Atlantic Division. It's where North Carolina State sits at 0 2. We see NC State home for Clemson next week. Florida State, Maryland, and Boston College in there. BC's only loss to FSU on Chestnut Hill. They're over in the Atlantic. Meantime, in the Coastal Division, it's the stronger division right now, with Virginia still sitting there at 3 and 1. North Carolina off their win over NC State. And then Duke. It's going to be another long year for the Duke. Eats. I would say the Atlantic, despite the records, is a better division. Better teams, more talent, I think, in the Atlantic, top to bottom. First down ball hit as he throws and it's incomplete. Couldn't put the touch in air under that that he wanted to for Bilbo as Reggie got hit pretty good as he threw it away. He's uh, holding his right hand a little gingerly as well. May have uh, hit it on a helmet as he threw it. Man, yeah, somebody's going right in my face. Help me out here. My receiver on the right route as well. Like the last time Georgia Tech played, every single time Reggie Ball threw the football at Lane Stadium, he was hit. Daryl Tapp and company from Virginia Tech, they just pressured him. I think there were 16 hurries. They had two sacks. Seemed like every time he dropped back to throw, and that's that's the problem when you have such a young, inexperienced offensive line. Second and ten, and they'll run it for five to set up third down at about five yards. That time was Deshard Choice with the carry. He's a sophomore who played at Oklahoma last year. Tullock made the tackle on him. But back to the ball carrier, Choice, he transferred without having to sit out a year because his mom broke her foot, was having trouble getting around at home from Riverdale, Georgia. So the NCAA, when they get 200 or so requests a year for transfer without having to sit out the year or that extra year of eligibility for someone, about half of them are approved. And with a family situation, Choice was able to go right from Oklahoma to Georgia Tech without sitting out a year. He's looking for a catch on third and seven. Instead, it's Johnson. Alvin Johnson first down to the 32-yard line. A marker came down as well in the defensive secondary. Let's check the flag here. Beyond state, so it's still first down. Holding defense number three. That penalty is refused. A.J. Davis the corner. Almost in the same position on the field where Georgia Tech hit the first play of the game. Calvin Johnson lined up in the slot and that's a that's an advantage because it's tough to find him and when you get a matchup that you like you have to capitalize on it. Jimmy Sutton is a young sophomore trying to stay with Calvin Johnson when Hudson can't find Calvin Johnson. The advantage in man coverage clearly is going to go to Georgia Tech. Nice run by choice. Takes it just shy of the 40. Nearly picks up eight yards. You don't know how good a back choice was as he was sitting behind Adrian Peterson. So it's, it's not as though you weren't good enough to play at Oklahoma. You just had a tremendous player second in the Heisman voting ahead of you. Well, you can see he's he's slippery and he's got nice speed getting through the hole. P.J. Daniels probably a little bit stronger of a back, a little bit more powerful, but I think choice presence has affected P.J. Daniels in trying to be out and be the best back he can be. Second and three. The quick toss for Johnson. Oh. Goes up. Out of bounds. Incomplete. They ruled Johnson did not get one foot down, and he was out of bounds. I don't know if they were trying to quick snap that to get the offside or what they were doing. Well, there. as a center, you are taught that as soon as you feel movement, forget about the snap count, snap the football. That's why quarterbacks always taught to keep your hands open because that ball can come up at any time. Reggie Ball, great presence of mind to take the snap because the center is just snapping this on his own. As soon as he felt the nose guard move, he snapped the ball. The problem is there isn't a penalty. It's a live ball. And that's why I said Reggie Ball, great job of knowing what to do with the football. Put it up to your guy. And he was out of bounds. Great call by the officials. 
perfect call, the correct call. So we have third down and about three. Here comes the state pressure. Ball throws incomplete. Player was taken out. Choice could not get out, and that's fine. Because if it happens behind the line of scrimmage, you can knock him down. Yeah, okay. you can knock him down. But the problem is Choice, maybe a little bit of inexperience, is trying to block Tullock, the linebacker. Tullock had a pretty easy job there as an outside linebacker because there was nobody going out for the pass. Reggie Ball had no choice but to just throw it into the ground and live for the next day, punt the football away. So the busy Ben Arndt kicks for the third time tonight. State has blocked a bunch of kicks over the years here. All that speed and all those athletes, they almost got to Arndt that time. Flag coming down for running into the kicker, I would assume, which would give him a first down. So again, you have North Carolina State with all these penalties. Penalties of aggression. They were really close to a block, and Mario Williams has become good at that. It's only five, but it's enough for a first down. Depending on what Georgia Tech is now going to do on this drive, that'll be another one of those plays that you Running think about. Running into the kicker, five-yard penalty, number nine of the defense. The yardage gain results in a first down. Ooh. I don't know if Mario needs to be asking the crowd to get a little bit louder right now after making a, a mental miscue. And I appreciate, like you said, Mike, it's it's an effort play. I mean, he's going out. It's it's a gray area, but the bottom line is on fourth and short, when you're coming after the punter, just try to avoid even giving the referee the opportunity to throw the flag. Questionable call at best. Choice on the run. And he gets about four yards, maybe even five. By the letter of the law, that is exactly what running into the kicker is. He didn't rough him because the kicker's in a vulnerable spot. If you bump into him, don't give him room to come down. That's a flag. Chuck Amato's seen plenty of them. 119 teams in Division 1A, so what? They were fifth worst in 2004, and they're in that bottom 10 again here in 2005. Penalties, turnovers. Last year, they were they were minus 17 in turnover margin. When you have minus 17 and you're, and you're committing silly penalties, it's tough to win games. Ball runs it. Going to be shy of the first down. Garland Heath was waiting for him with 2.04 to go. Reggie Ball has only completed three of his 13 passes, all three to Calvin Johnson here in the first quarter. Kirk, we mentioned NC State since the Phillip Rivers era ended is 6-8. In those eight losses, they have outgained their opponents by 657 yards. They have 182 more penalty yards, almost two full free football fields, and they have been awful in the plus-minus regarding turnover, giving the team two extra possessions each one of those eight losses. Tough to overcome that. This team has never been short on talent since Chuck Amato has been recruited. Third and a long yard. Choice is stuffed and cannot get there. So we're seeing two offensive lines that can't blow the defensive line off the ball. And these good athletes up front or the blitzers for Georgia Tech are making this a real defensive game. So much focus goes on the defensive ends, but watch the big defensive tackle. This is how to play when you're in the inside, pushing the offensive line right back in to the backfield in making a play on third down and short. Great play there by the junior John McCargo was one of the better interior players also in the ACC. At time, uh, less of a punt rush. And Arnt's kick goes through the end zone. The kick is 47, but the net is 27. So the offense comes back out with Jay Davis, the quarterback, and Rob Stone, the man directing this offense on the sidelines, an interesting story. Yeah, this is Mark Tressman's first college job since he was Miami's quarterback coach back in the early 80s. He admitted to us he didn't see a whole lot of college ball through the years, but he has seen so far eh, a lot of the program has trickled down to the colleges now outside of the limited time he has with the players his biggest frustration has been the different hash marks in the nfl everything was placed in the middle of the field now he has boundary issues wide side of the field issues it sounds minor but kurt this is really a big change i think uh you're, rob you're right it's a big change and it's affected him here with his play calling we'll talk more about that in a second here's the first down pass it's uh, swung out nicely 
Washington takes you the yard shot of the first half. Well, uh, this is a lot of pressure. Yeah, now you're going to get the right one. I'll get the left oh, one. How about that? What right. a contest. All right. All right. The hash marks are 40 feet apart in college. Here are the pro hash marks. That's awful. That's one. This is my meat drawn here. Oh, neat. But that's where it is. It goes right under the goal. See, the length of the goal post, the width of the goal post, excuse me, 18 feet, 6 inches. That's the width of the hash marks in the pros. So the plays happen from over there. Well, God, I won this. That was good. Uh, no. I beat no. We'll so go, bad we'll, there. We'll review that in the oh, second okay. half. Go to the replay the, booth. <laughs> <laughs> the problem that he's having, though, is he's used to calling all his plays in the middle of the field in the NFL, whether it's on the left or right hash. The throw is hauled in by Clark. The touchdown maker earlier gets to the 35, and that's a first down. Is it really that much of a difference when you have your hash marks at 18 feet 6 inches apart in the pros and in college they are 40 attacking feet. always from the middle of the field and now you have to try to be able to attack from the left and from the right from the 35 nice twisting run by Tony Baker keeps this play alive and comes very close to a first down out at the 45 yard line it's going to be about a yard shot those of you just hopping on board here at 830 Eastern time glad you've joined us in Atlanta Georgia with Rob Stone and Kirk Herbstreit, Mike Tirico, North Carolina State, trying to even the record at 500. They are 0-2 in the conference, getting the only touchdown of that opening quarter on a little razzle-dazzle, a handoff that turned into a pass that turned into a touchdown. No running room at that time for Baker. As K. Michael Hall, linebacker out of Houston, makes the play that should end this first quarter. You can see Tony Baker has got some live, live legs, and he is looking to, to spring forward. But it's been an interesting first quarter. It is the 21st birthday for the quarterback, Reggie Ball, but he has 10 incompletions in the first quarter. State hit the one big one, the 40-yard touchdown, to make it 7-0 after one. The only touchdown scored by North Carolina State. They lead 7-0. Georgia Tech has the defense ready for third down and about five. From his own 40, Jay Davis throws to the tight end, T.J. Williams. What a play. He put the ball in the right hand, that big mid of a right hand, stuck it over the line, and got a first down. That's why he's an NFL prospect. That was a good call to get him the football on third and short. Anytime North Carolina State gets to third and five, third and seven or eight, they're going to try to find T.J. Williams. He is their go-to man in that kind of situation. The pressure was coming. Davis got back, sat in there, and the line gave him enough time there to deliver the football for the first down. Jay Davis out of Clearwater, Florida. It's kind of morphing into that comfort zone you need to be a quarterback and a leader. Has to get out of the pocket here. And Slides down after a gain of three. Sports Center 30 and 30. Here's an update from Reese Davis. All right, Mike, baseball playoffs this afternoon. Cardinals and Padres. Reggie Sanders still hot. Drove in two more. He's got eight RBI and eight at bats in the series. Cardinals beat up on the Padres and take a two games to none lead in that series. 6 2 the final there. And Super Bowl in the 2010 year will go to Miami. It was supposed to go to New York, but that was conditional on getting a new stadium built. Well, let's see. Now the team from Atlanta has not scored in college football. Astros shutting out the Braves, and Atlanta also left out of that Super Bowl mix, Mike. Yeah, they were, Reese. You're right. They weren't happy down here today. Lamar Barrett with the catch. He's right at the line for a first down. Pushed out of bounds by Dewan Landry. And Kenny Scott will see the spot. If they move the chains, Reese pointed out Arthur Blank, the uh, founder of the Home Depot, along with one other man. Uh, he is the owner of the Atlanta Falcons. They made a very strong bid for the 2010 Super Bowl, and he said that uh, essentially the weather of South Florida won out, and that's why Miami got the Super Bowl for 2010, as the NFL owners met at the Super Bowl site for this year, Detroit earlier today. Weather might be a little bit of an issue this year. Huh? It's right. beautiful. Come there. on up. Late January, early Feb February. Today, Feb 5, 2506. First and 10 for NC State. Time for Davis. Now the pocket closes, and Reese gets to a mistake. The ball was taken out of the hands of Davis. Only the line judge could see when the ball came out, so they're going to have to make a decision here. They're going to call it back at the 49-yard line and no change of possession. They ripped the ball out of the hands of the quarterback, but they say the whistle blew. Mike, I was just about to say what a great job Mark Tressman is doing with, with the pass protection. He's keeping tight ends in. It's maximum protection. They're only getting three receivers out, so they are giving 
Davis time to throw. They're calling forward progress there. The ball was ripped out, but by then, the whistle had already blown. But they're keeping the tide. This is their answer to John Tenuta's complex blitz scheme. Keep the tight end in at times. Keep the back end only getting three out. Tight end stays in to block their screen for Baker. Stopped before he gets to midfield. And Gary Guyton, who's had a special teams impact uh, the last year or so out of Hinesville, Georgia, forces a good play. Gary Guyton was the guy last year that would make every tackle on kickoff yeah, coverage right. in the punt. And you and I, Lee, would say, that guy <laughs> is going to be a player. <laughs> and he's getting a chance now from time to time to get K. Michael Hall and Jarris Wilkinson and Philip Wheeler. A little bit of a breather. Still only a sophomore, has a great future. Leading to get to the 33. The throws play stop. The right, the right tackle looked like he pulled out a hair quick. Couldn't hear the whistle with all the noise, and it is a flag on the Wolfpack. It's becoming a problem for Derek Morris. Ball start number 71 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Derek Morris in a North Carolina game had two false starts and a personal foul, and a lot of people were upset with him. I thought it was interesting. Mike Berry, his position coach, who got a, who got after him during the game against North Carolina, came back three or four days later and said, you know what, it, it really wasn't his fault. He just gets off the ball so much faster than the rest of our offensive line. It, it gives the uh, perception that he's jumping off sides. Third and a quarter of the field. Just run and be safe. Don't do anything silly. And only a gain of a couple is Chris Reese. The strong safety who was a linebacker last year but makes so many plays you feel like he's a defensive lineman. He's on the other side of the ball so often. Forces the punt. Torpedo man. <laughs> He's all over the field. John Tenuti's got nicknames for every one of his defensive players. <laughs> he had us laughing. He's a very engaging coordinator who you hope someday is going to get shot to be a head coach. He's got great energy and defensive coaching schemes. There any to kick it. Fielded inside the 10 with no room to run. And taking down at the 13 is Pat Carter. LaRue Rump made the tackle. Net of 42. That's very good. Georgia Tech long field when you come back. Midwest to the ACC. You'll see those other games. So dial up game plan. Get it done. Ball first down pass. Bilbo dropped it at the 20-yard line. And it's incomplete. So that ABC game, the uh, game plan, those three ABC games, all seen at the same time, one Eastern. So... You can call your pay-per-view provider for more information or get it online and get a chance to see the one or two not on in your area. What do you think of the pressure that everybody's talking about on yeah. Mac Brown and Vince Young? Seems like every year it's an annual thing. Everybody mm -hmm. talks about the pressure that's on Oklahoma and what they have to deal with, or the pressure on Texas and what they have to deal with in playing Oklahoma. And in the past, I, I would agree that that was always a mindset game for Texas and something they had to overcome. Not this year. Second and 10 from the 14 ball. Runs with P.J. Daniels for a shovel pass. Reggie takes it over the 20-yard line. We saw Tashard Choice in the last series. Rob Stone, what's going on with the running back? Well, Tashard Choice during that last timeout was kind of doing that awkward walking, stretching where you kind of know something's bothering him, but they're not telling you what it is. Right hamstring, right groin type area. We saw Reggie Ball kind of take that hit on his right hand in that last series. No medical attention given to him. He just had a towel over it. But there is concern about starting fullback Mike Cox. He's in the locker room getting his left thumb x-rayed right now. All right, so all banged up there in the backfield. That awkward walking, stretching. Down. That was well described, Robbie, because we're both sitting there. I know exactly what you're talking about. That look. <laughs> Third and three. They need to get to the 24. A bad snap doesn't help this play. See if Ball can make something out of it. Throw back wide, wide open. Unable to haul it in. Oh, my goodness. That play could have gone for a long way. Was that Michael Matthews? Yes. The tight end. Oh, my goodness. Michael Matthews has to uh, has to be able to judge the ball because never give up on Reggie Ball. I don't care about the snap. He's going to figure it out. I mean, the, I don't know how many times we've seen this over the years. Ball's on the ground. Reggie Ball figures out a way to not only pick it up, but he's ready to play ball. You've got to be able to judge that football. If you catch that... 
Michael Matthews is going 60, 70 yards right down the sideline. Hunt by Arndt. Another one. They're caught by Darrell Blackman back at the 42-yard line. Matthews didn't start the game because of nagging injuries. Couldn't get himself out there for what would have been a big game. Good field position for the pack when you come back. 7-0, the Wolf Pack leading as we are five minutes in to the second quarter. Nice first down run into the boundary. to get out to about the 48-yard line. Shot blocking by oh, Newby. Brown. Here is the second down run for Brown. Just going to be right shy of midfield. I think that pressure is still there. I think the biggest difference is the quarterback for Texas, Vince Young. And the thing that I, I think people need to appreciate if you watch him play, is how he affects the entire team. And he he is the trump card to that pressure. Texas now gets into these kind of games and welcomes that pressure, yeah. whereas before I think they did feel tight when they got into OU week. Now, I think it's almost like, oh, this is great. We love this kind of atmosphere, because all because of Vince Young. Beating Michigan and Ohio State can do that for you. Yep. In a three-game span for the Horns. Third and three here is Davis, knocked down at the line so this game essentially is being played between the 20s we've had one big 40 yard play off a little bit of trickery other than that the defenses are putting it on lockdown and it is a uh, a Ray guy special a lot of punts here tonight Mike I get confused here with stick and stretch the stick that time the young sophomore Daryl Robertson <laughs> got some pressure number 90 and he can't get there so he does the next best thing it just jumps up and it's 6 5 2 20. Sometimes that's your best move to bat the ball away. Durani the punt going to try to angle it to the side but it's right down the middle. No room to run though as the attack was made the 16 yard line on the return attempt by Pat Carter. Stephen Tullock the starting linebacker brought him down a return of 30 of one after the 36 yard punt. Georgia Tech three and one here as they play their fifth game of the season slid up to number 18 in the polls for 15 on September 18 after beating Connecticut. They won the opener at Auburn snapping the 15 game win streak. Second time they've beaten Auburn here in the last three years but then coming off the loss at Virginia Tech 51 7 and a long time to wait after that game as they were off last Saturday. P.J. Daniels runs it up the middle gets it to the 22 yard line. NC State couldn't make the play in the backfield, so it ends up being a good first down gain before Tullock's tackle. Kirk, we asked all the players, Chan Gailey, the head coach, about the hangover, they feel the effect, and you know, they gave him 24 hours, and that was it, and most of the guys said that they got over it. Reggie Ball told me yesterday it was more like a bruise. I asked him, is it a bruise or a scar? The scars linger. You never really know with young kids, but balls are more like a bruise. I feel like the guys have come back for me here this week in practice. Trying to establish a run, and there's none there, as has been the history in this series. It's been tough to run for both teams. And the game got away from them before they even tried to establish themselves. The game was over. Third knee. Here comes the pressure. This time, the back is there. P.J. Daniels gets it. Gets the first down. Takes it out to the 39-yard line. There's a difference. That play a couple of times ago didn't work because the back couldn't get out to get open. That time, the veteran Daniels does and tries to jack up his yellow jacket. You can see the emotion. And P.J. Daniels has been waiting for this opportunity early in this game to just make the difference. And what I liked is he shows his patience setting up the blocks getting back behind the offensive line letting the lineman almost just become a decoy and get in the way and he cut it upfield for a big game been a while since they've thrown to Calvin Johnson the receiver came in short motion Reggie ball rolled that way Johnson has double coverage and ball just throws that away second down you and I looking at looking at these safeties that time there's a safety not only lot a corner not only lined up over Calvin Johnson but that time they had a safety behind him there have been several plays where Calvin Johnson has been all by himself just a corner and Calvin Johnson one on one if you're Patrick Nix the offensive coordinator Chan Gailey you have to I think give Reggie Ball as an experienced quarterback the freedom to say there's no way North Carolina State can leave a corner by himself one-on-one -on -one. 
we have to capitalize on that. And there it is again at the top of the screen. A.J. Davis is that corner this time. Reggie Ball throws that way. Johnson catches. Good call, bud. First down, just shy of midfield. Calvin Johnson looks at himself as being the best receiver in the country, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. I know I do. He's got outside leverage by a corner, but worried about Calvin trying to go by him. That time he set up the corner, made the move to the inside, and you can see the timing between Reggie Ball and Calvin Johnson. They have worked very hard over the last two years to have that timing, and it's a matter of time till they try to slip Calvin Johnson downfield in one of those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Other than the screen pass that kept this drive alive earlier, the other four completions for Ball have been to Johnson. Hello, my name's Ronaldo Moses. May I show you the grass, P.J. Daniels? Let's go. All right, there's McCargo. I beg your pardon. 90, not 96. Yeah, the play. That Daniels play a couple plays ago, that's what he was talking about. Uh, Patrick Nix with a great competitor, Rob. The throw by Ball is dropped by Clark. He had to go airborne. Would have been a tough catch to haul in, but Pat, the sophomore to Jacksonville, could not get that first down. Well, Pat Clark... And Bilbo, Demarius Bilbo, have to make plays. And this would have been a tough catch. But if you're the quarterback, you're Reggie Ball, you're dropping back. The whole world knows almost every time you're dropping back, you're looking for your guy. Well, defense is going to take him away by using numbers to take him away with two, with double coverage. It, it's, it's very important for Pat Clark and Demarius Bilbo to be able to make plays, to make force defenses away from that pressure. And a third down coming up. Third and 14. Those other two receivers join Johnson. Johnson is in the slot coming across the field. Ball's looking at him. This pass is intercepted. And a good return opportunity for NC State. Taken down at the 26-yard line is Miguel Scott. They want pass interference. And the path that Johnson was taking, where the ball would have been, was clearly impeded. Scott, after the 34-yard interception return, hobbles off the field. Mike, he, I think there was there was definitely some pushing, but when you're when when Reggie Ball had dropped back to throw, when you're throwing a crossing route and you wait that long, you, you're too late. You're just too late. And it's nice to have that kind of protection. But when you wait that long, Mike, it, the timing between the quarterback and the receiver is not going to be as effective. And yet there's a there's contact there. But Johnson kind of stopped a little bit. He did there. stop. He yeah. almost forced the contact. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But when you're Reggie Ball, the ball has to be thrown now. If you wait and wait, now the safety becomes a factor because they are keeping a corner yeah. on the bottom and a safety at the top. And Miguel Scott read Reggie Ball's eyes perfectly and came up with a big pick. Shame to see Scott so shaken up. They're looking at him over there. Timeout taken by North Carolina State. They have the ball at the Georgia Tech 26. You get a look at Miguel Scott out of Miami who had to be carried off by his teammates. The safety coming up with the interception as he was hurt on the return. They'll certainly get a little bit better look at Miguel. Meantime, the offensive coordinator, Patrick Nix, who Rob Stone told you about, being fired up before as his team came off, fired up at the officials that time for the no call. But it looked worse than it was on replay. Davis, the first down, nice touch. Got enough air on that ball. And only gained about two yards, maybe even a yard, though, as it went out to Tony Baker. Chris Reese and Kenny Scott on the tackle. North Carolina State, the entire first half, has started deep in their own territory. In these last couple possessions, they're finally beginning to win the field position game, which in a game like this, where it's low scoring and the defenses are controlling things, becomes very, very important. Points are at a premium at this point. Neither team's able to run the football. All of them. Tough night for both offensive yeah. coordinators. You saw Nick's talking the ball. Mark Tressman's quarterback, Jay Davis, is 9 of 12 here on the night. On second down, waiting for somebody to clear. Hits it. A good job by Anthony Hill, the backup to T.J. Williams at tight end to drag Kenny Scott Maybe a gain of about three third and six or so coming up as we're inside of five minutes here in this first half the answer at this point from our Tressman on pass protection which is a huge concern for the Wolfpack going up against John Tenuta's scheme 
his answer is maximum protection. And we'd rather protect our quarterback and only have two or three receivers out than to get blindsided and then to have our quarterback get beat up. Field goal from here is 40 yards. You really don't want to take a sack. Bobby Washington, the running back, in the game as a wide receiver. Four in the pattern. Quick toss. Get it out to Washington on the edge. Look at him climb through would-be tacklers and get to the first down at the 15-yard line. Good job at West Coast offense. Put people in places where they can make plays. That principle applied there. Rhythmic timing, getting the ball, getting rid of the football. Bobby Washington's one of the more athletic, more gifted players. They line him outside. Watch the block by T.J. Williams, the tight end. Gives him just enough room here. And Bobby Washington's natural athletic ability and hunger to find the first down line picks up the first down for the pack. He got out of a tackle of Jarris Wilkinson, their best tackler. This place could have been stopped in the backfield, but Baker kept it alive. Still, he loses about a yard. Dennis Davis, the boundary corner, comes up and makes a play. So as we come up on four minutes on this first half game clock, top of the hour, here in Atlanta, North Carolina State 1-2, 0-2 in the ACC. Lose tonight, you're done. You're not coming back in this league at 0-3. Jay Davis of North Carolina State. The only touchdown. 40-yarder to Brian Clark in the first quarter. That has been it. Most of the game played between the 20s thus far. Second and a dozen for Jay Davis. Flushed, chased, threw it away. Perfectly legal. Out of the tackle box across the line of scrimmage. Adam Oliver, the sophomore, heating him up. Third and 12 coming up. Adam Oliver <laughs> really just uses his power and strength because this was not a blitz. It's one of the few times, believe it or not, Georgia Tech has gotten pressure on Jay Davis. And that time, they didn't have to bring the blitz. Well, Miguel Scott has that right ankle bandaged up pretty good. His interception, just try to see if he can stay around long enough before getting carted off to see if it will turn into points. Needing to get to the five for a first down. Davis throws a short one, complete, out of bounds. Really back behind the original line of scrimmage for Bobby Washington. So at the 14, we're going to have a 32-yard field goal, as long as nobody gets a personal foul flag for Never know. Wilson. Underlying tension of frustration in this series on the state side as well. Washington. Out. Yeah, Bobby Washington catches the football, but Mike, Bobby Washington is a back who, had, coming out of high school, signed with Miami and uh, ended up coming over to, to North Carolina State. And because he's not been able to hold on to the football, has dropped in the depth chart. But ability has never been his problem. Durante from 36. John continues his perfect season. He's doing something that's very difficult. He's doing the kickoffs, the punts, and all the placement kicking. A lot of kicking asked of this man, and he's from Georgia, so he delivers in his native state. Back here in Atlanta, 10 to nothing. North Carolina State leading Georgia Tech. The Tech offense has been stymied. Reggie Ball struggling in the passing game. Just five of 20, and one screen pass completed to P.J. Daniels. Four catches for that man, Calvin Johnson, who is our Applebee's hometown hero tonight. You see his uh, updated career numbers. He's from Tyrone, Georgia, just a half hour down the road. He followed Reggie Ball as the ACC Rookie of the Year. He can make big plays, has made spectacular plays over the last uh, year plus. This sophomore hasn't been able to hit the home run yet for the Yellow Jackets tonight. They're going to have a banged up secondary to go against in this next series. You saw the safety who made the pick. Miguel Scott get carted off. A.J. Davis was shaken up in the last series. Durante's pick is returnable for the first time tonight. Chris Woods put it on the turf, though. And will give them awful field position again. What a mistake. Well, long field. Calvin Johnson can make a big play. Something that Kirk asked him, said, hey, you can do that if you think you're one of the best in the country. I can't just come out here and take plays off, you know. Um, that means my opponent's being better than me, and I'm doing, not doing anything. 
Reggie Ball throws him a low hard one. He makes a nice catch in games four. Were you surprised at his answer to are you the best receiver in the country? <laughs> I really was because he is one of the more laid back, humble guys. And it was still a humble answer, but he was just matter of fact. It, that's his goal, and he feels that he is the, the best receiver in the country. I, people at home, to, to again realize he's 6'4", about 232 pounds, probably can run about a 4'3", if he really worked at it. And he has a vertical of uh, 43 inches. I mean, you're talking about a, a very, very special athlete. They've got to get him the football, though, tonight to get back into this game. Free release off the line here, going his way. Johnson can't come back to make the play. DeJuan Morgan has come in now as we got more backup defensive backs and Morgan couldn't help get it. Manny Lawson with pressure forced that out early. We're talking a lot about Calvin Johnson but, and getting him the football, but boy, these crossing routes that take so much time going you know, east and west or left to right, it takes so much time and it gives the safety time to come over and, and be involved. I think in the second half, They've got to try to come up with ways to get the football thrown vertically upfield to Calvin Johnson with his speed, with his size, leaping ability, ability to adjust to the ball in the air. That's where you've got to capitalize on his, his great strengths. Marcus Hudson now has him in man coverage, bottom of your screen. It's third down against a five-man rush. Ball throws to the area vacated by the streaking Johnson, and it's not caught by Pat Clark. So Georgia Tech continues to struggle here in the passing game. Ball is 6 of 23. They've only run it 16 times tonight. Chan Gailey's offense is in neutral. Well, they're not running the football, and it's putting more pressure on Reggie Ball, but Chuck Amato deserves a lot of credit for the way they're defending Calvin Johnson and forcing Reggie Ball to go to somebody other than Calvin Johnson to move the ball. Chuck Amato saying, we're going to win the battle in the trenches. Make Reggie Ball throw to somebody besides Calvin Johnson to move the football. They've got a really good punt returner in Darrell Blackman. This one has height to it. See if Blackman can make something happen from the 39. It's a block in the back, and it's coming back. They got two flags and a hat. That is the full NC State hat trick of flagitation. <laughs> Look at Chuck. Come on. Flag, flag, hat. That was the trifecta? Yes. That's, on, that's on after Sports Center at Midnight Eastern, the trifecta. Oh, man. <laughs> this would be the other version of it, though. Oh, man. We at least have two blocks in the back, I believe. I was getting worried that back judge Doug Rhodes was going to have to start throwing sweatbands and whistles. <laughs> he was running out of loose gear to toss. NC State with only three penalties maybe felt like they have some work to do here to catch up to their average. It felt like a lot more, didn't it? <laughs> J.C. Neal, the safety, involved. Questions of when the flags happened after what they were. There's a personal foul in here as well. Oh, there we go. There you go. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna double down. It's just a matter of whether it's the, is it the hold with the personal foul or the push in the back. The personal with foul and the hold and the illegal use of hands block of the back should be able to come together depending on when the personal foul happened. So instead of good field position, they may be backed all the way to the twenty yard line. Or to we got two block in the back by the receiving team. Both of those penalties are refused. Okay, uh -oh. We have a personal foul. Number. I don't know, you want to try 14? Need, need, need the number. Anyone? Got a personal foul, number seven of the receiving team. That's a previous spot enforcement. 15 oh, yards. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. How about down. that? Okay. Uh, Even worse. That's why it was such a worse. That's why it was such a long discussion. Right. Was it happening during the kick or post possession? Oh man. Okay. Juan Morgan, the red shirt freshman, makes an even bigger mistake. Because now Reggie Ball in an offense that's struggling, and we're gonna giggle. Now we're gonna giggle on the sideline. There we go. Make a huge, big mistake right there. Because Chuck Amato's gonna get this tape. Now he's gonna see it. There's, there's the other Okay, but either way, either way, yeah, it doesn't matter. Number. It's not time to be giggling when you make a mistake to get Reggie Ball back on the field. I don't care if it's, just, if it's the guy that made the mistake or not. So this defense will have to uh, answer the question. And if you're Georgia Tech, here you go. Here's your opportunity now. There's the, the seven on the infraction. It's we talk about so often in college football, the double number issue.
First and 10 from the 29-yard line. George Cooper, the tight end, in motion. Ball waiting, launching for Johnson. It looked like a punt. Into the double cover, just trying to loosen him up. Reggie now 6 of 24. What's going to be interesting to me, Mike, in the second half is North Carolina State is a team that typically has to load up at the line of scrimmage with their safeties, with their linebackers. They started this game out that way. But their front is dominating Georgia Tech so much that they're they're allowing themselves to keep their safeties back. They're, it's, it's almost like the, the, my, the great Miami defenses where they keep two safeties back. It's almost impossible to get the ball thrown downfield. Well, their front is so good that they're protecting themselves right now with two safeties deep. J.J. Jones, number four, is one of those. Reggie Ball tries to take advantage of their depth with a run to the 35, four shy of the first down. Third down coming up as we're inside of two minutes in the conversation is getting slightly salty. Clock running here as Georgia Tech is easing into it with a minute 43 left. Now they're going to decide to huddle before third and three. If you're Georgia Tech, you have got to capitalize on this opportunity that NC State has just put back in their lap before this half. Because there's momentum either way what oh, happens. Man on this Shoot. drive trying to get it to the fullback incomplete intended for Cox and they will throw it right back to NC State on a punt two of 11 on third down Reggie Ball looks lackadaisical it, it, he just does not look not only is he not throwing with accuracy he just doesn't look to be the guy that the guy that we saw in the bowl game last year when they played in the champ sports bowl against Syracuse was confident he was in control he was in command right now he looks like he is struggling and lost right now and not playing with a great deal of confidence another kick from Arndt this is high but short NC State says get away and the bounce works out in Tech's favor the stats will tell you this punt's going to be about 60 yards but reality tells you it was a bad kick never bad Mark May, Desmond Howard, Reese Davis in the studio. A look at what's coming up at halftime, boys. All right, Mike, on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, commanding lead for the Cardinals in the baseball playoffs. Get you up to date on that. Tell you how the Buckeyes fill their need for speed and the Pontiac game-changing performance. Ohio State's increasing their speed and Penn State's increasing their confidence week by week. I'm going to break down Ohio State's defense. Great linebackers, that's a given. But the eight others are playing at a high level also. And Herbie's right, it doesn't matter who's giggling. They're, they're doing up downs in practice next week anyway. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's over, RD. Yep. I don't yeah. care. I don't care who poor, it is. Poor Reese. Re Reese is in there for, I think, the 11th consecutive night. He's been doing up downs in that studio as the run comes out to the 20 yard line. He's, he's, Reese has to look at who's here with me tonight. It's Jim Donnan, Mark May, Desmond Howard. Reese has been there for everything. I was with him watching North Texas and Troy the oh, other night. He's everywhere, man. <laughs> Run taking what, us to the How many 20? straight days of football? 20. 20. Yeah, and I know we've got Sunday and we've got Monday. Starting you know, fall, Monday, yep. But, but uh, we're banging out Tuesdays, <laughs> Wednesdays, and Fridays. And <laughs> North Texas Troy game was good. I, I enjoyed that game as North yeah. Texas' long streak was stopped by Troy. And then last night, Northern Illinois beat Miami of Ohio. A little bit of a struggle right now for the Red Hawks. RD's the energizer, buddy. He's, He's going, going, going right now. Good, good, good call here. Just... just in this half, in, in this half, <laughs> up ten. Good fight for the extra yard. Fumble the ball. Clock will stop for the first down. The running for North Carolina State in this half. Baker, the freshman, 11 carries for 32 yards. Neither team has controlled it on the ground. Jay Davis has managed it well, and even though the first down is picked up, here come the Wolf Pack exiting. It's good. I mean, it was sloppy, right. but a good half for them. Oh yeah, a great it's half for NC State on the road. It hasn't been the prettiest, but this is the kind of game. This is the kind of start to the game that they needed. To come out even more confident now in the second half. Yeah, and your defense did a great job. Oh. Pushed into that corner a couple of times and getting it done. It's ten nothing here at the half. Calvin Johnson caught all but one of Reggie Ball's six completions. Five catches, 21 yards. But Ball, as you saw before halftime, six of 25 here in the first half. Ten nothing NC State. Here's Rob. Jay Davis, Kirk has done a nice job here in the first half. Jay Davis has done enough. I mean, he's 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 managing the game. 
not making silly mistakes, is being the leader that they need. But I tell you, the, the game right now is being won by the North Carolina State defensive front and dominating the line of scrimmage and not allowing Reggie Ball to find any kind of rhythm at all. Mohamed Yayawi. Freshman out of Roswell, Georgia, <laughs> set to kick it off. Been waiting for that one. Yayawi. I know, we're waiting for the score all night so we can bang out of Yayawi. Andre Brown with a ton of room to run. Front down just shy of midfield. Good return. Here at the 48, Davis and the pack to work right away. Four receiving options. That pass is incomplete. Hopped it to Lamart Barrett. And then you can find Calvin Johnson downfield in one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Second down and 10. The toss for the touchdown catch man, Brian Clark, is incomplete. We'll have a third down coming up. Back to what Mark May, Desmond Howard, and Reese were talking about in the studio. All these crossing routes and crossing routes and attention to Calvin Johnson. When Georgia Tech gets the ball back, do they need to look other places before coming to Calvin Johnson? Well, without question. I mean, we talked a lot in the first half about how those crossing routes take too much time, and they're only going 10 yards downfield. Both things have to happen. You have to have a different receiver make a play. You also have to get Calvin Johnson down the field vertically. But without a running game, none of that will matter for Georgia Tech. Needing to get to the 42, to the yellow line. The five-man pressure. There's room for Davis. He's going to throw it and pick up the first down with Lamar Barrett. Very good play. There was room to run. He might not have gotten the first down that way, but does on a gain of 16 to Barrett. There's Jay Davis showing you way he has improved and, and having great patience back in the pocket and then rolling to the right you and I are thinking run you know you've got room you've got a block downfield he calmly just waited for Barrett to break free break free and made a nice throw Reese the safety coming around the end won't get there and going the other way is Tony Baker for another good first down gain into the boundary talk about the quarterback Jay Davis you know it's always tough what's the famous saying don't be the guy to replace the guy be the guy who replaces the guy who replaced the guy. Well, the guy in North Carolina State was Phillip Rivers, the all-time ACC leader in total offense yards, 13,582 yards, face of the program, great magical run when the new coach came in, married, children, son of a coach. I mean, everything was perfect, and Jay Davis had to come in. Okay, you go get him next. And there was a lot of aura around the program that made it tough for Jay Davis to be accepted for being Jay Davis. Second and seven. Baker reverses field. Trying to maintain some yardage there, but instead lost a couple and is going to put the quarterback, Davis, back in a third and long situation. Mike, he struggled at times last year because I think that very fact he, he was replacing Phillip Rivers, but also a banged-up offensive line. They, they didn't have any continuity on the offensive line. He was pressured a lot. You know, at one point last year, I can remember talking to him, he was booed in a home game against Wake Forest. Booed by the home crowd. And that was that's tough for a guy to be booing your own stadium and to come all, come through last year into this year and to show what he, he's very resilient and to show what he's made out of. He's become their leader. Chuck Amato said if he would have been 22 of 25 in a game, people tailgating would have said that hey, Rivers would have hit the other three. Yep. Got to hit one here on third and ten. And he stumbles over his offensive lineman. Usually that's feet getting tied up with a center or a guard. And fourth down, out of field goal range, they'll punt it away. What that usually means is you have an offensive line hurrying to get back and to get back into pass protection. Hurden, the right guard, actually stepped on the right foot of Jay Davis as he was trying to drop back. And there's Herndon, a guy who's been on the defensive side of the ball for three years. So this whole offseason was about footwork and getting polished as an offensive lineman. There's token pressure as Georgia Tech tries to avoid exactly what happens here. NC State downs it at the one-yard line. Perfectly executed. Again, it's the ball, not the man. Marcus Hudson and company keep it from crossing the goal line. Seventh time, Tech will start inside its own 20. Let's make a huge deal about this because there's too many times guys cannot find the football. And Marcus Hudson, starting corner, one of the better corners. Look at his, look at his eyes, looking for the football. Great job, well coached, and I want to make a big deal because I watch 25 games a Saturday, and I can't tell you how often guys 
can't find the football. Great job of keeping it in play and downing it for North Carolina State. This poor Georgia Tech team, they have started deep in their own territory and inside their own 20, seven of the first eight possessions of this game. First down run with P.J. Daniels. He's not going to go to... Is that John McCargo again? Number 90 out of Drake's Branch, Virginia. Had nine tackles in that game against Virginia Tech. Boy, he's more and more and more plays the more you watch NC State. John McCargo does not get the headlines that Mario Williams and Manny Lawson get. But if I were, to, if I were getting ready to game plan North Carolina State, I'd be as concerned, if not more concerned, about McCargo in the middle. Presley, Tank Tyler... Boy, these, these, this defensive line from North Carolina State, they're not only athletic, but they're physical, and they're incredibly quick on the inside. Take it on the right side of the line there, and McManus and Honeycutt as ball throws, caught by Demarius Bilbo. There's a first down, picked up across the 15-yard line. Gain of 11 on the first throw of the half from the current quarterback to the former quarterback, Bilbo. Talked about this a lot in the first half, how with so much attention being put on Calvin Johnson, at some point, Bilbo or Pat Clark have to make a play. You're isolated by yourself against a corner, and when you when they're, when they're going to give you that one-on-one -on -one matchup, Bilbo's talented enough to be able to capitalize and make plays. And that time, for Reggie Ball getting back, throwing the football for one of the first times tonight with great deal of authority. From the 15, Daniels takes it forward. Five yards isn't the worst thing you can do on first down. We saw a starting defensive back injured for NC State. Rob is an update. Yeah, we saw him walking off with the help of crutches, that ankle in a boot. Well, they took him to the x-ray machine. NC State won't say what they saw in the x-rays, but what they did see is enough to rule him out for the rest of this game. So no Miguel Scott, the starting safety, the sophomore out of Miami, Florida. So more pressure will be on J.J. Jones, who's normally in there in the dime situation. He'll have to slide up and play that safety spot for North Carolina State. After a four-yard gain, here is Ball throwing downfield for Bilbo. It's incomplete. Garland Heath coming over to help out Marcus Hudson in the coverage. Talked about the importance of running the football for Georgia Tech, and they've come out here on first and ten, you know, trying to push the push the defensive line back. And even though right now North Carolina State's stronger than Georgia Tech, just to give them something else to respect, because North Carolina State, uncharacteristically, Mike, I don't know if it's because of the injury to Scott or just because they're winning the battle up front. When they when they're keeping their two safeties ten to twelve yards off the line of scrimmage. On first and second down, you have to try to run into that and then get them back into playing the man free that they like to play. Third and six, pressure coming as Ball sets up the screen to Daniels, first down to the 30-yard line. Gain of 11, and another third down conversion with P.J. Daniels, the senior out of Houston, Texas, who at one time was the seventh string running back at Georgia Tech. Well, when you have a defense that's pinning their ears, especially on third down and getting up field, you take your chances with the screen. Sometimes you see a draw this time with Daniels getting out in front of the, behind the blockers and, and getting out in front of that defense. The second time now we've seen the screen pick up a first down for Georgia Tech. Some issues here with the play call. Reggie Ball spins out of the huddle, takes a timeout. You never want to burn one in the second half, especially when you're trying to come from behind as the Yellow Jackets are doing with Daniels, Johnson, and Ball. Only player count for 350 of total offense. Answer is coming. Flag down, ball thrown, complete. Breaking through is James Johnson. The freshman, freshman gets a first down to the 40, but we got a flag back here. He's Let's fired up. up. I'm fired up. Somebody made a play. It's, it's not wearing 21. It's his third catch on the season and obviously of his career looks like it's going to count all sides defense right tackle that penalty is refused first down mike the three receiver set gets north carolina state back into the man coverage and this is the first time we've seen a receiver make a catch and have a burst actually getting upfield and Make it a play. Nice job by the young freshman. Johnson's really the fourth receiver after Pat Clark, Bilbo, and Calvin Johnson. But good opportunity there out of the timeout. 
into NC State territory. George Cooper, the tight end, is the move man. Daniels stacked up in the back and just has to crawl forward. NC State's penetration of John McCargo again, blowing everything up. Oh, we talked about this uh, former walk-on from Houston, who at one time, a few years ago, even though he wants the ball now, wanted to see the field. He was the seventh string running back at Georgia Tech. Able to move up the depth chart, some perseverance, some patience. That's hard, isn't it? Seven, Seven strings is hard to do. Yes. When you're a young guy, he's been with this like 85 guy roster too. Yeah, like you said, he worked hard. I mean, that's that's impressive. And he was even more impressive about it too. When you find out what drove him and got it, him. Ball's pass is caught by Pat Clark. We're gonna have third down and about four coming up. Talked about his family and how important they were for him during that time. Always when you find guys that have the ability to work through adversity, there's always a supporting cast behind the scenes. There is Daniels, a big third down run on the left side. He's fighting for that extra yard. That's not going to come. From here, your field goal's 49. Your kicker's missed his last four. His confidence is low. You're probably in a situation where you're going to go for it. I think you're going to go. I think you would think Chan Gailey needs to go for this right now. It's the first time you've felt Georgia Tech have any kind of momentum and an opportunity here to try to capitalize on moving the sticks a little bit and gaining some confidence in this offense. If you're going to win this game, you've got to be able to make this play here on fourth down. Reggie Ball invites the home fans to settle down. Maybe they'll move Johnson in motion. See if they get the coverage to free him up. No, nope, trying to move the fullback. Spread the defense and run ball. Oh, and a mistake. Short circuits this. Prior to the snap, ball start number 72 of the offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. That's Brad Honeycutt, and he's the one experienced guy up there. He's the lone senior with a freshman and three sophomores. Now, what will they do? fourth and six now, I think Chan's still feeling that he has to to try to take this Brad Honeycutt who's your senior your one senior up there just starts to rock back and you know why that is he's trying to get a little bit of a head start against Mario Williams who's trying to get upfield in a hurry Calvin Johnson in the slot Can you go that way deep maybe Johnson over the middle. Got it. First down at the 27-yard line. You know, at some point, you're, and what the guys in the studio were saying is exactly what we were talking about. you got to get other people involved, but when you need somebody to make a play, go to the guy who Chan sure. Gailey said, best receiver he's ever been around. And he's been around Michael Irvin. What I loved is he has triple coverage here. I mean, everybody who questions whether or not he has the physical toughness to get off a good jam, and right now he has he's very elusive he got away from a jam another guy coming up and then avoided the safety to pick up that first down ball throws it incomplete a lot of these plays with the action to one side is to come back and see if you get that man coverage with Johnson going deep and Mario Williams he's going right ear hole left ear hole chatting Richie ball escorting him right back to his huddle now when we meet with ESPN, you know, in July, and we talk about the new rules. Would that be considered taunting when a guy walks all the way back to the huddle when he's in the quarterback's ear? Would that? Because I sometimes I, yeah, I, well, I sometimes I get confused with there's some inconsistencies with when do you? To me, that that would be considered a flag. Ball rolls it, launches it. Johnson with two men there. He throws up and makes another great play. Help! Johnson adds to the highlight reel. The flag is after the play. I don't know if it was on NC State or Johnson for the activity afterwards. It's 15 for spiking the ball. Throwing it against the wall back there. And you've been cooped up for over a half. You make a play like that, sometimes the emotions, we were just talking about the emotions on one side. I'll be surprised if it's dead ball after the, uh, after the score. But I, there was a little bit of a push, a little bit of a shove by, Johnson. by Calvin after Johnson. The score, 
It was a dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Number 21 in the offense was spiking the football. That penalty will be administered on the succeeding kickoff. Touchdown. He definitely, he definitely uh, got caught up in a moment, but I, what I was a little bit surprised by, they didn't call Calvin for pushing off away from the defender. Travis Bell will add the extra point, try to make it a three-point game. Never missed one, hit all 42. 10-7, Tech back in it. A 12-play, 97-yard drive. Reggie Ball, six first half completions, six on that drive. The score by Johnson tightens this one up in Atlanta. And I still don't like that flag. Calvin Johnson and Reggie Ball in conversation with Chan Gailey, talking to the, uh, the motor that makes his offense run here about how they're going to keep going. What a drive. Backed up to their own three, 97 yards in less than six minutes. Six completions in the first half. Six completions on that drive. And it's a 10-7 game with less than seven minutes to go. Getting it against Marcus Hudson. We'll go back and look at that touchdown momentarily. The flag for the spike of the football takes the kickoff back to the 20-yard line for Yahiawu. Yahiawu. And he hits. Owawi. Good kick. Return to the 25-yard line, well covered as Andre Brown tried to bring it back. Kirk back to the touchdown. We talked about a little bit of a push by Calvin Johnson, and you get a pretty good look here. J.J. Jones, the safety, following him to the corner. Once the ball's in the air, they're right there. I mean, Johnson comes down. And Johnson's a big receiver, 6'4", 235 pounds. He leans down on J.J. Jones, and you know what? A great receiver will tell you he gets away with that. And the defensive back will say he's cheating. He shouldn't get away with it. A little bit of a shove by Johnson, but he gets away with it for the score. From the 26, Jay Davis in the state offense try a quick hitting run. Good shake in the open field by Tony Baker. Look at him break through a tackle, too. Take it out to the 48-yard line. A marker is down. The gain is 21. We'll check the flag. Offsides, number 90 of the defense. That penalty is refused. First down. Daryl Robertson, the sophomore. Going to mark it back at the 47, where his knee came down. But a good run right away, something quick hitting. I know Chuck Amato walked off with Rob Stone and talked about how much he liked the, the way North Carolina State was running the football in the first half, but the only thing that's been consistent is to balance with the play calling. 20 runs. 19 pass, but they have not been able to run the ball well at all. Run 21 is a gain of a yard. You know, we're looking at each other. 33 yards rushing. It's like the way we're running the ball. Right. That's, that's what Chuck said at halftime. But if they can get more from Tony Baker. But I think it's going to be tough. Both these teams just need a little bit from the running game. Just enough to make the defense respect that part of it. Because like John Tenuta told us about Mark Tressman's offense yesterday, he said, you know, he'll hit a crossing pattern towards the sideline, and that's his toss, that's his version of a toss sweep right. in this possession, this ball control possession passing game. Second and nine and a half, Tenuta's blitz is picked up, and T.J. Williams, the tight end, what a huge target he is. First down to the 39-yard line, 13 on the game for the senior out of Tarboro, North Carolina. When you pick up the zone blitz, you have a great chance to find huge seams in the zone. And T.J. Williams, as a veteran, sits right in the hole and gives the quarterback, Jay Davis, a big target to throw to, and they pick up the first down. But they're doing a great job of picking up the pressure. Another first down run, the shifty freshman runner, Baker, gets snowed under and pushed back. So it'll be a loss of only a yard with forward progress after the Chris Reese hit. Bonus half flat. Phillip Rivers. Here's Davis. Rivers replacement. Brought down after a gain of about two. Third and ten coming up. Joanna Hawaii coming in up front with uh, Iris on Yabi. And the fans will jack it up here for third and ten. Oh, 
many guys are coming? Who's coming? Who's blitzing? That's the whole game. Here come the five. Davis throws it. It's caught by Lamar Barrett. Shy of the first down. Two things you have to do with this defense. Identify who's coming and then make a play on the back end after they catch it if they get it out. Dennis Davis made the tackle. From here, a field goal would be 53 yards.
loss of only a yard with forward progress after the Chris Reese hit bonus half lap. Philip Rivers here's Davis Rivers replacement brought down after a gain of about two third and ten coming up Joanna Hawaii coming in up front with uh, Iris on Yabi and the fans will jack it up here for third and ten guys are coming who's coming who's blitzing that's the whole game here come the five Davis throws it it's caught by Lamar Barrett shy of the first down two things you have to do with this defense identify who's coming and then make a play on the back end after they catch it if they get it out Dennis Davis made the tackle from here a field goal would be 53 yards and when you're John Tenuti with the Georgia Tech defense when you do bring the pressure and they get the pass off the most important thing is to be a sure tackler and that time Davis made the tackle forced a punt all it takes is just, if he slips that tackle he easily picks up a first down last time pinned him back at the three didn't do any good Tech still drove down the field and scored this one's very high again Hudson tries to spot the ball again and did he make the play at the goal line <laughs> did he make the play yes he did oh what a Mike, we've got a coaching clinic here. I know Frank Beamer usually gives these, but Chuck Amato and Marcus Hudson now can start putting a little package together and showing how you cover punts and pin your opponent deep in his own territory. We're back here in Atlanta. The play was reviewed while we were away, and it was confirmed that it did not touch the goal line, so a great play here by Marcus Hudson. Even a better play this time by Hudson. The ball took a tricky ah. bounce, and he still was able to not only locate the football, but have enough athletic ability to be able to get a hold of it before he hit that line. It's such a simple principle, locate oh, the ball. Yeah. But he's done it twice, and even on that touchdown, so much happened. Calvin Johnson, a great job to locate it and react to it. The two guys who have been head-to-head -head a lot tonight with a lot of big plays just finding the ball. Reggie Ball just finding some room. Gets it out to the two as we approach three minutes in the third. NC State a touchdown in the first. Georgia Tech a touchdown in the third. Georgia Tech now starting their eighth possession inside their own 20. Eight of nine in their third straight inside their own 10. They are, they are field position. <laughs> and let's give a pop to the punter. John right. Durrani. Now that's all five of his punts downed inside the 20 or out of bounds inside the 20. And again, he's the guy who's doing it all. Punting, kickoffs, and place kicking. And there aren't a lot of guys doing that nationally. Reggie Ball from his own end zone. Launching to Calvin Johnson. Flag down. There was contact there with Johnson and A.J. Davis. And let's see who's going to get whistled for it. I'll tell you what, Mike. I, I was looking up and watching that, that play, that sequence, the entire time. This could go either way because I don't know what else you can do when you're a defender. Calvin Johnson bulldozed. A.J. Davis. That's what he's telling his coach and the official. Holding number three of the defense. Watch what A.J. Davis does. He's, just try, well, he's holding, but he's trying to survive. And when you see it in real speed, Calvin Johnson, I thought he was blocking. I thought maybe... When I look back to the ball, I thought maybe Reggie Ball was running a sweep that way because Calvin Johnson came off the ball so hard and coming right after A.J. Davis. I thought he's blocking him. And then at the last second, he kind of gets around him. There was a hold there by Davis for sure. But I think he was just holding on to save his life. Yep. See him grabbing the cloth there a little bit. Called correctly from the 12. Reggie Ball. Underneath this one hauled in by the big tight end Michael Matthews crumbling down to the 35 yard line. It's a staple of this Georgia Tech offense. Pick up 23, clear out an area, and bring somebody back underneath it. Mike, that's exactly what they did. Is they, they had Bilbo here 
he's going to clear it out. And the most important thing is the timing and getting this down here because watch how open it becomes once Bilbo clears it out. Hudson runs with him, and it opens up for Michael Matthews. That's a big play. You're right. We've seen that around here for a long time. Nice draw, too, by the way. <laughs> D.J. Daniels, he's going to lose a couple of yards. They just can't run the ball on him. Mm -hmm. They try to establish it. There's not much room to move. Oliver Hoyt made the tackle, slowed by a hamstring injury. Took a good part of the week off when they had the break after the game back a couple Saturdays ago. Well, Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator from Georgia Tech, made an interesting point when we were talking about his young offensive line. Because I said, was there that much of a difference physically between Auburn, yeah. who you played pretty well against, and even North Carolina, who's athletic up front, versus what happened against Virginia Tech? And his eyes just kind of got real big, and he said, oh, yeah, big difference. Because Auburn's very athletic. North Carolina's very athletic. But with Virginia Tech, they're not only athletic, they're physical. And right now, physical defensive lines affect this offensive line being so young. Second and 10, ball going to get hit as he throws for Johnson. Laid out to try to make the one-handed catch. Reggie Ball was getting approached on both runways and took it right in the face. James Martin, the second, with a one big hit there. And LaRue Rumpf was the other one. Well, the crossing route with Calvin Johnson is it I don't, we've talked so much about how long it takes it's not a bad play especially when your quarterbacks rolling out it gives him more time to to be able to sit and evaluate the defense uh, but that time Johnson didn't come all the way across from the right all the way to the left the time the play takes time and one thing you know as a quarterback when a play is going to take that much time the hits coming against this good a defensive front and the defensive guys took the worst they hit helmets on the side yep. as they were both trying to get to where they thought ball would be. Third and 11. He's flushed this time by Manny Lawson. An up for grab one is incomplete. They want a hold on J.J. Jones. George Cooper was trying to get back to the ball. No flag. Fourth down. Punt coming. The NC State defense. I mean, you almost feel in a game that's this low scoring and every possession matters keep wanting to say great stop or, or big possession but almost every possession at this point is huge for both sides see if they may try to come after Ben Arndt came close in the first half to some blocks picked up a running into the kicker penalty this time a return is set up a fair catch signal that made after the 33 yard punt Darrell Blackman brings it in let's send it to the student the pep rally for the USC Notre Dame game usually at the Joyce Center not going to be there next week Davis with time, first down. He throws for Williams off the hands of the tight end and intercepted by Kenny Scott. NC State is saying that he was out of bounds. The play has been called on the field as an interception. It happened right on the state sidelines. Let's see the replay and see if this is reviewed. Chuck Amato is looking up at the scoreboard to watch the replay they're showing. It's the first poor decision that Jay Davis has made tonight. It's actually a good decision. It's just an inaccurate throw. He has a tight end, wide open, able to make the play for a first down, but he throws the ball, and the ball hangs on him. And it's inbounds, and that's a reception, and that's Georgia Tech football. It's a great look at it right here. Look at his feet. Inbounds oh, the whole yeah, easily, time. Easily. So right back to work goes Reggie Ball. Calvin Johnson the slant. He caught it at the 33. Bouncing off people. Pinballing his way out to the 28-yard line. So the Davis pick. The 19-yard pickup for Johnson. Georgia Tech with bouncing its step as we head to the back end of the third quarter. Mike, I think the three receiver set for Georgia Tech is, is giving them their most consistent look and it's given them their most production Johnson has moved around but the most success he has had is moving to the slot because it's forcing North Carolina State to play man-to-man -man coverage and that for Reggie Ball is pitch and catch to the talented Johnson Johnson took the worst of that hit they come out with a tight end at fullback ball rolling throwing on the run complete right shy of the first down for the starting tight end now Reggie Ball's returning the whooping now. George Cooper got the start tonight because of Michael Matthews' injury. And Georgia Tech.
shy of the first down for the starting tight end. Now Reggie Ball's returning the woofing now. George Cooper got the start tonight because of Michael Matthews injury. And Georgia Tech moving inside the red zone. Mike, now we're starting to see Reggie Ball look like Reggie Ball. I mean, he's he's playing, and I think he's moving around. You saw him jawing. A lot of times you see a quarterback jaw, around, jaw back at a defensive player. That's because he's starting to play with a little bit more of his confidence that we're accustomed to seeing from Reggie Ball this year. More spreading of the ball as well. Final play of this quarter comes from the 19. Back to the air for the fullback. Incomplete. Try to get it to Mike Cox. Garland Heath tried to time the hit. No flag put down there as we get to the end of the third quarter. Tight, low scoring, good game in Atlanta. Off we go to the fourth quarter. Scott had the interception. Can it turn into points for the Yellow Jackets? Trying to tie or take the lead. Here in Atlanta. Calvin Johnson back on the field. Off the field the last two plays. Eight catches, 109 yards. This is third and one to start the quarter. Reggie Ball fake a little kneel down. Throws the little screen. Not really a screen, but a long toss to his running back, P.J. Daniels. And a penalty marker came down on this play. First down picked up easily on the play. Offside, 91 of the defense. That penalty is received. First down. The play gets more than the penalty. First down inside the 15. Like I think that was when Manny Lawson maybe just lined up offside. I mean, he didn't. He definitely didn't move. Reggie Ball just trying to buy some time, trying to duck down. And by ducking down, he almost got his feet tangled up with the center that time. He's very fortunate. Gutsy call on third down. He's laying low there. For what? He was just trying to hide. He trying can hide. He's under 5'11". No. He can't see him anyway. He's trying to show the quarterback sneak. Uh, okay. A little decoy there. Okay. Delay, a blocker, and space for Daniels into the end zone. Georgia Tech takes the lead. Touchdown. North Carolina State defense looks like a dif different defense right now as far as their energy. And I think a lot of that needs to be attributed to the way Georgia Tech has had a they've been on a roll here in the third quarter. A lot of it throwing the football, but as we've seen, PJ Daniels, when you give him a seam, he didn't even wait for his blocker that time. He was he was hungry to get to the end zone. Travis Bell adds the extra point. Penalty marker comes down. So a penalty marker down here on this extra point. Let's just check that before we head out. On a 47-yard drive, led by Reggie Ball. Big pass to Calvin Johnson, kept it going. Daniels runs it. Good ball, personal foul, number 90 of the defense. John McCargo. 15-yard penalty, penalized on the succeeding kickoff. NC Four State, count. which has lost poise at other times this year, has to keep it here. They're being tested, being outplayed in the second half. For the first time tonight, the home team leads. Tech by four. 14 10. One score per quarter. 40 yard touchdown pass to Brian Clark made it 7 0. John Durani's field goal made it 10 0. Reggie Ball to Calvin Johnson in the third made it a three point game. P.J. Daniels just capped off a five play 47 yard drive. Hey, it's the way things are right now in Atlanta. The home team leads by four. The Braves are leading the Astros 5-1 at the bottom of the seventh. Three miles south of here at Turner Field. And on the campus of Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech leading by four. In the fourth. Penalty brings the kick out to midfield. And what you'd expect is drive it into the student section by Yahiawi, the kicker. Back to the extra point that 
Just a little thing, thing Mike, because it doesn't cost North Carolina State necessarily field position, but it's just a, another little thing that, that just drives Chuck Amato crazy. Right in the middle of the screen, oh, one of his punch. best defense alignment, McCargo, just is being blocked, and then just decides to throw a punch. And when he came off, Chuck Amato right there to talk to him about how we can't lose our cool. We cannot lose our cool right here. We've been here before. We've got to learn from our mistakes in the past and try to show maturity to win this game in the fourth quarter. First and ten from the 20. Here's the toss to the freshman back, Tony Baker. Gain of two. Jarris Wilkinson made the play. Wilkinson, the senior out of Skyline High School in Oakland, California. Same high school that produced Gary Payton. Penalties have been a problem throughout uh, this year. They were a problem last year for North Carolina State. Tonight, it hasn't, it hasn't been necessarily what's hurt them. I mean, tonight, it, they just have had an offense that has not been able to find consistency, and their <laughs> big reason is they're going up against a very good defense. Georgia Tech gave up that one big play for a touchdown. State trying to establish a run here. Again, only a couple of yards for the freshman, Tony Baker. It's a one-back offense, and in a one-back, you need your offensive line to really do a good job. There's no lead blocker there to help you. And right now, that offensive line is not controlling the line of scrimmage. And here we go with a third down. Here you go with third down. And Mark Tressman, the offensive coordinator, has to be thinking T.J. Williams, the tight end, third and six. He's the go-to man. He'll be at the bottom of the screen, flexed out just a bit. See if they can get him the football. Last year, he had 31 catches. 19 was a first down. Struggles to get off the line. Davis brought down. Mike, it really wasn't anything fancy. It was just a defensive line that just had tremendous speed. And they went right by the North Carolina State offensive line. It wasn't one of the master schemes by John Tenuta that time. It was just a defensive lineman wanting to get to the quarterback. Loss of 14 on the sack. Plenty of room to return this kick for Pat Clark. We will be brought down at the 40, so very good field position. There's a penalty marker down back at the 17-yard line, so let's check that. The punt was 47, the return 17. Two penalty markers down. One kind of in the area where everyone was coming downfield. And then one, the one came in there. late. Yeah. You, know, one, you just have to wonder. There's been some pushing and shoving here these last couple possessions. A lot of chirping going on from both sides. All night they've been yapping. Yeah. The frustration on the NC State side all season and in this series. Tex won nine of the last ten. And both flags this time go against the home team. By the way, that sack for Georgia Tech came by Chance Walker to force the punt. Oh, Vance Walker. The return as a block in the back. Number 52, that penalty is refused. We have holding by the receiving team, number four. That's a post scrimmage kick foul. Penalty is 10 yards for the end of the kick. First down. Sports Center 30 and 30. Here's Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Mike, the Cardinals have a two games to none lead over the Padres in their divisional series. 6 2 victor today by two more RBI from Reggie Sanders. He now has eight RBIs and eight at-bats in this series, Game 3 on Saturday. And the NFL awards the 2010 Super Bowl to Miami, beating out Atlanta, among others, for the Super Bowl that had been awarded to New York on the condition that they have a new stadium, but they don't. Sports Center after the game. All right, Reese, and all the news all the time on ESPN News. So we have the Cardinals heading to the World Series for the National League. American League, who, who do you think? Whoa, 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 whoa. you're no, in Atlanta. Doesn't matter. You're going to fly out in the morning. I know. Yeah. We're fine. St. Louis is in on that side. Who do you have in the American League? That's wide open. It's wide, wide open, yeah. White Sox at two. I wouldn't mind seeing some, some new faces in there. Endearing yourself in Atlanta, New York, and Boston. Very nice. <laughs> First and 10 from the 33. They toss it to P.J. Daniels. He is running with a purpose. 10 first down yards there. Give him 11 out to the 44. Again, we told you the story before. He was the seventh string running back three years ago. 
P.J. Daniels tells the story of perseverance and preaches it to anybody who wants to listen. And his energy and enthusiasm has been apparent tonight. Watch this move he makes on Tullock. And P.J. Daniels gets, boom, cut right back up underneath. Tullock has to collapse and make the play, attack the ball carrier. But that time, Tullock was not ready, and P.J. Daniels is just getting better and better, and he gets stronger as the game goes on. From the 43, this is also like a long handoff. It works well. Demarius Bilbo across midfield, a gain of eight. Rob Stone has more on P.J. Daniels. Mike, it is not often that belays and chalkbacks help a foot player on the field. That's just the case with Daniels. He's always been fascinated with those close climbing walls. You know, you see at malls every once in a while. Well, this summer he finally attacked one here in Atlanta. After his first experience, he came down. He told us his whole upper body was shaking because he didn't use any of his legs. You know, that sport, it utilizes a ton of those muscles you don't realize you have until he actually used them. So he told us, hey, it made me a lot stronger. Also made him stronger mentally as well, picking out the routes and thinking about your next move, all things he does on the field. Rob, I thought that was interesting, him talking about it helped him with decision making. Climbing a wall, and he said, what did he say? He did it four straight times? Yeah, four times through, up, up and down, up and down. down. Yeah, second and two. He makes the decision to go straight ahead here, and he stopped for no gain. Mm -hmm. Rob and PJ got into this little conversation that Herbie and I were kind of you know, looking under our glasses <laughs> going, do you know what they're talking about? It's Rob Stone. I guess Rob likes to climb walls. That's something you guys do when you call in your MLS games there, Robbie? And you're killing me, Trico. Just because I read all the game notes in the articles, don't take it out on me, buddy. I know I'm here just for one Thursday. Don't don't mock me. No, we're, we're, we're praising you for climbing walls. I appreciate That's it. That's what happens when you work with Spielman. He yeah. to climb walls. So you, climbing, don't wanna, you don't want to know what happens when you work with Spielman. They're climbing walls, and we're in the lunchroom. That's right. Third and two. They need to get just over the 47 to keep this drive going. Ball, quick hit, complete. That's the second catch for the redshirt freshman. James Johnson, eight yards, and a first down picked up. After that long toss to Demarius Bilbo, he was shaken up. So Johnson was on the field in the key third down and keeps the drive alive. Mike, I think James Johnson right now is earning a lot of respect from his, uh, his teammates and from his coaches. He has made some big plays and big moments. That was third down, and North Carolina State had walked their corners up tight. You would think the undersized Johnson might be at a disadvantage, but he got off the line and picked up the first down. 41, here goes P.J. Daniels taking it to the 37-yard line. Rob told you about the climbing wall. It's funny, he talked about the tunnel vision of this season that he has. He's just so focused on everything going on this year that that one loss did not steer him off course. You know, guys say that a lot, but you get the sense P.J. Daniels, who's earned everything that he has achieved getting the All-ACC accolades a couple of years ago, really is one who appreciates, hey, these are my last seven games in college football, make the most of every carry. To be frank, he was annoyed that they didn't get the opportunity to run the ball as much at Virginia Tech and really wanted to be in this situation, able to run the ball, control the clock, and control the game. NC State knows he's coming, too, and Stephen Tullock and Manny Lawson make the tackle there. For third and about six coming up. Georgia Tech has run 70 plays. North Carolina State, 48. And this yard disparity factors into that. Uh, here's another third down opportunity for the North Carolina State defense. If they want to win this game, and they want to turn around their season, they're facing one in three right now. We're going to find out what kind of character this team has because they continue to get Georgia Tech in the third down. They've got to get their defense off the field. Somebody's got to make a play. Tech's made the last couple of third downs and tried. A flag is down as Ball rolls it right, tosses it on the run to no one. That was just a live to see the next play. Let's check out the flag. Jack Childress has been on TV a lot tonight. <laughs> Offside, defense number 96. That's a five-yard penalty. We'll see third down. Ronaldo Moses, senior. Mike, I, I'm wondering if they're they're lining up offside. Gotta be. Gotta be. I, I, you don't see any movement. Manny Lawson had the, this problem before. Now Moses. I mean, that's a pretty basic principle to have that cost you on a huge third down. 
and maybe we can show that to, to see if that's what it was. If he was just lined up off sides. Seven flags, 59 yards, and third and seven, they're off the field. They're going to have to punt. Now it's third and two. Daniels out. Fake to the other running back. Ball loading for Calvin Johnson. Double coverage. He couldn't get there. From here, the field goal is 50. Kickers missed his last four. Offense could stay on the field. Surprise, a little bit of a surprise call there. They remember the play that they had third and short. They did the fake quarterback sneak, and then yes, when that one worked out, I think that opened the book back up for uh, for that call. This is the previous play, and this is it's a defensive end just lined up, lined up offside. Down at the bottom, right? Down at the bottom, Moses, the 30, uh, you know, and it, it was third and seven. Yep. Got him to third and two. Now fourth and two, and they'll go for it from the 33. Ball quarterback draw, a lot of room. Reggie Ball on the run. The 20, the 15, first and 10 for Georgia Tech on a very big fourth down run. Spread him out and let your leader take you for 21. Mike, if you watch the Red River shootout, you might see a lot of this. When you spread a defense out and the defense plays man coverage, look at the man coverage on the outside. It, it's going to allow an athletic quarterback to find a seam in the defense and just play backyard football. All the secondary is cleared out. The linebackers are cleared out. And when you have the athletic ability that Reggie Ball has, he <laughs> just run right up the middle. You make the free safety miss, and you walk into the end zone. Ball has six yards per carry here on the night. Seven totes for 43 yards. Daniels try to bounce it to the outside and score his second straight touchdown inside the 15. He couldn't there. But NC State has run very few plays in this second half. It has been completely Georgia Tech controlling the ball, the tempo, and the energy of this game. You have to wonder now, as we get under nine minutes to go, the way Georgia Tech has, has controlled this, what was a, a concern for Georgia Tech was the offensive line. Now it almost looks as if NC State is getting tired up front and Georgia Tech is starting to win that battle. Consequently, they should be able to run the football better. Calvin Johnson at the top of your screen. Ball fake. A roll. A run out of bounds at the oh, market between the 7 and 8. Reggie frustrated that he got out of bounds because it stops the clock with 8.03 to go. Kirk touched on it earlier. Reggie Ball making his 29th start here on his 21st birthday. Missed the Connecticut game. He had viral meningitis. If you've ever had that, it's just totally saps you of your strength. Suffering from headaches, just exhausted and dehydrated. They checked him into the hospital. Friday night he was ill, went to the hospital Saturday, stayed for about 36 to 48 hours. Didn't really practice much before the Virginia Tech game. It takes a while to get your strength and energy back. Reggie felt like he was about 100%, but I said, you don't really feel 100% yet do you he said not really so this long half has taken a lot out of Reggie Ball timeout taken here we'll be right back here to watch Georgia Tech leading by four control in this second half Kirk they've had the ball most of the half they have they've doubled the amount of plays called from from North Carolina State Georgia Tech facing another third down they've already converted a third down on this drive a fourth down on this drive and now here is another big third down NC State called the timeout. Reggie Ball was really tired. Got a break. Toss it for Calvin Johnson. It's going to be out of the end zone. The timing just not sinking up with that long toss. So here comes the kicker. Travis Bell, who had a stretch of making 15 in a row last year. Missed his first, made 15 in a row, missed his last. Had a little slump going on here. He's missed his last four field goals, including a 27-yarder that he shoved to the right from the left hash mark in the first half. So this... Is an important field goal. Important kick for Bell. And let's see if North Carolina State can avoid a personal foul here to give Georgia Tech the automatic first down. Not often you say that before a field goal. <laughs> From 24 yards. Pushed it again. He, it's that, that is the exact same miss he had earlier. The exact same miss. So a North Carolina State team in desperate need of a shot of adrenaline to get going maybe they get it there as the struggles for the kicker bell continues he's missed his last five the drive was 12 plays 
and they show for it nothing except time run off. Well, now it's up to Georgia Tech's defense because, Mike, last time Bell missed a kick like this, North Carolina State, it was early in the game, they took advantage of the opportunity. It was almost identical spot, pushes it to the right. North Carolina State came back and scored on that next possession. It was when they had the halfback toss, but the razzle-dazzle, the back pitch back to Davis, and Davis found the receiver downfield for the touchdown. First down from the 20. So can State get it done? 7.52 left. The throw is complete. And look at the opening. Off to the races. Brian Clark, who scored earlier. Will he get another one? Brian Clark all the way. Touchdown, NC State. With a flag on the back end of it for the dive into the end zone. <laughs> the lead is two. Clark scores for the second time tonight. <laughs> oh. That flag, is, that flag is called in the Pac-10. Reggie yeah. Bush picked well, up one. Yeah. Lendale White picked up one last week. Lendale, by, Lendale White picked up one last week against Arizona State on their way to a comeback. But almost as if it was, it was rehearsed. We just talked about missed field goal. North Carolina State capitalized with a, with a big touchdown pass. <laughs> and here comes another missed field goal. And Brian Clark comes back and gets the touchdown Clark Clark has the high ankle sprain he missed the Carolina game showing yep. no ill effects here I mean no. he, he pulled away from that secondary after the score there was a dead ball unsportsmanlike against the offensive team for diving into the end zone the touchdown counts penalized on the succeeding kickoff quick sidebar yeah we can't dive into the end zone but we can allow the defensive back or the defensive lineman who's 6'7", sure. 265 pounds to, to talk into Reggie Ball's ear for 25 seconds on the way back to the huddle. You're not getting on the officials. You're getting on the rule book. Yeah, well, whoever's yeah. in charge of this. Well, the officials this. are calling it by the book. Right. Well, you're the book says there's no taunting. That was yeah. uh, number B there. You pulled out the book here. Keep your book. NC State they had done nothing. I mean nothing offensively here in the second half. 80 yards in 13 seconds with Brian Clark to make it a 17-14 lead for the Wolfpack. Just surviving, hanging around, and then finding the quick slant right here. This is the most important thing. I want you to look at the angle and the way Jay Davis puts this football right on stride. This is the importance of hitting a receiver on stride. Reese gets out of position, the safety. But when you throw the football in front of a def in front of a receiver, you give him a chance to split the secondary and find the seam. And I'm telling you, <laughs> Brian Clark, who's got an injury to his ankle, has speed by pulling away from that Georgia Tech secondary. Now we can't dive into the end zone, but we can verbally assault Stop. <laughs> the <laughs> opponent. Assaulting. We can we can uh, we can <laughs> good, give good throw by Davis. Great throw. And you know what's so funny? I just, yeah. Georgia Tech, almost every play, not, yeah, almost every play, brings pressure with five. That time, there were four guys rushing. It was kind of a standard defense for pass coverage. And they were able to get him for the big play. He's mixed that look up, and mm -hmm. a lot of times he's been able to get pressure. But Brian Clark tonight has had the big game so, so far for Jay Davis. Now, there's seven and a half minutes to go. And remember, Georgia Tech has had their way with the NC State defense. North Carolina State is, is on defense, almost has had a bend but don't break mentality. They've only given up 14 points. But now they're gonna be tested here again. Of course, they're pushed back because of the personal foul. <laughs> In a couple of yards deep, here comes Woods. Brought down to the 27. It's as if he was brought down at the 12 in coverage because of that flag. James Martin, the second, comes up with the play. Well, Chuck Amato, age 59, NC State alum, has been getting a lot of heat in Raleigh because of the expectations built with all the recruits, all the speed brought in from Miami. Chuck was one of Bobby Bowden's top recruiters of South Florida for many, many years at Florida State. They beat Florida State back-to-back -back years, so now people say, we're, we're on our way here in the ACC if we were North Carolina State. Terrific defense built up, but the losses and the lack of wins over the last couple of years in games that felt winnable to the fans, including two losses to North Carolina. That's why there's so much heat on this team here tonight. Ball, tosses it, incomplete. 
DeJuan Morgan came up, and a flag is thrown in way back from the back judge after the play. I thought that we'll have to look at the replay, but boy, that looked like great coverage by Morgan. He may have seen something that the, that the official on the side couldn't see. Well, the one official was right in front. He had the back judge call it from way from, from behind the play. Morgan comes around. This view. Pass interference. Oh, 22 ah, of the man defense. Penalized to the spot of the foul. I Automatic first down. I thought his right hand made contact with the football <laughs> before his left hand came around to con and made contact with the receiver. At worst, it was simultaneous. Exactly. We're seeing Dewan Morgan and J.J. Jones a little bit more here. Reminder, Miguel Scott starting safety for North Carolina State. Injured in the first half when he made an interception. Ball always on the move. Short quarterback gives him a better chance to see. Throws it away. Very nice catch there on the sideline. Second down coming up. As the conversation continues. We remind you that Sports Center will be coming up later with Stuart Scott. Tiger three back and Colin Montgomery. Second and ten. It's the four-man rush. Some time for ball. This pass is brought in just shy of the first down for Calvin Johnson. That'll be catch number nine of the night. Or the best receiver in the ACC, if not the nation. Mike, we came in expecting to see Marcus Hudson, because of his size, follow Calvin Johnson all over the field. But... The young man who's been on him more often than not has been Jimmy Sutton because of the way Georgia Tech has moved him into the slot. Sutton is the nickelback, and he's had a responsibility of playing a lot of man coverage against Calvin Johnson and held up pretty well. A run. P.J. Daniels kind of lost his footing, but he got the first down on third and short at the NC State 46. Possessions dwindling. Six and a half remaining here in regulation. How's that for a night? We still have over six minutes to go. Eight, 18 times they've tried to get the football to Calvin Johnson. That's, I love Chan Gailey. At least he's trying to get the football to his playmaker. And at least he's honest. Remember, as we were chatting away about Michael Irvin and the players he coached in the NFL, and he finds he, you know, 21 is going to probably try to win the game for you at some point here. Ball trying to set it up for his tight end, George Cooper. Never got out there. And that prop, you know, that doesn't show the four or five other times that they've been, they, they tried to get him the football, but ball had pressure or he scrambled. Uh, Calvin Johnson, I would say, for, uh, when you gauge his ability, he's had a pretty good game. Not an exceptional game, not a game that he's capable of, of having. He could, he could probably take it to a different level, but the one thing that I think North Carolina State has done is they put enough pressure on Reggie Ball and they put, it's allowed them to put all of their focus in the back end on Calvin Johnson. A lot of times with two secondary people tried to make Reggie Ball go to another receiver. His nine receptions a career high, and he may be the uh, target on third and eight and a half as they run for a yard and a half. With P.J. Daniels, another Stephen Tullock tackle, the top tackler on this team, and top ten tacklers in the country. Third down and nine, Mike. It's Calvin Johnson in the slot is usually where they have put him and had some success at trying to get that matchup with the nickelback, Jimmy Sutton. That's exactly where he goes to and exactly who he draws. Ball underneath for James Johnson. Incomplete. James Johnson was trying to work off the action of the Calvin Johnson route. And now we have fourth down. And they're going to have to punt it away with 524 and two timeouts remaining. Here's one way to take away a star receiver. Is Jimmy Sutton's underneath right there trying to stay with him. Here comes Garland Heath. Bam! I mean, <laughs> the ball's in the air. I'm thinking, isn't that a pass interference? I mean, Gar Garland Heath didn't hesitate. He said, I'm going to get called for a penalty, or you're not catching the ball is what it's going to come down to. Wow. <laughs> he lowered his shoulder. John McCargo was uh, slowed on the place. So they have to take him off while he's helped. I'm telling you side. right now, that will be a 
very hard fought three point kind of game that's decided late. That will be a great game. This punt goes out of bounds inside the 20. I think Arndt would have liked better. It's at the 16. NC State hasn't run many plays, but the last one went to the house as the Wolfpack up three. Yellow Jackets and Wolfpack tonight in high definition on college football primetime. Only 17 plays in this second half for North Carolina State. The last one went the distance. They lead by three. Screen for the freshman. And Tony Baker comes down after really a loss of a yard. So we'll have second down coming up. He's actually glad he caught that. The leader of this team. They will be ready to play at the Buckeyes. Second and 11, stumbling through the hole to the 19. Is Baker we'll have a big third down coming up as that clock slides downhill inside of four and a half minutes. At our meeting this morning, when we were looking at some of these elements and saw that play, I, I turned to you and said, "When's the last time we saw that great Penn State uniform move that fast?" I, well, I have to go back to. I mean, there'd been some individual players, yeah. but it collectively, uh, probably '94. I mean, and I know that was a huge year for Penn State offense right. and I'm not comparing this team now to 94 but it's been a long time since you've seen that jersey look that fast third down fans trying to urge the tech defense for a stop Jay Davis milked the play clock safe pass to the tight end TJ Williams takes it in bounds fights forward for a first down that is some kind of play by T.J. Williams. A 10-yard gain. They mark it up in his forward progress to 29. That play is going to either force Georgia Tech to use its timeouts or force him to lose about 90 seconds on the clock. Mike, there are so many great tight ends this year in college football. As much as we talk spread offenses, T.J. Williams, to me, is an Algie Crumpler for the Atlanta Falcons type of receiver. And Algie Crumpler went to North Carolina. This, this, he very easily could have gone out of bounds or been shoved out of bounds. But he realized not only to stay in bounds, look at the effort to get the extra yardage to pick up that first down. You will see T.J. Williams next year playing on Sundays and making plays in the NFL. NC State went to its best offensive player when it needed one, just like Georgia Tech had. The freshman must stay in bounds here. Mistake. Shoved out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Tony Baker's playing essentially his third college football game he does gain seven yards but you gotta just slide stay in bounds hope you get a mountain west call and keep the clock running this is the quarterback in me saying that if i'm jay davis first thing i'm saying on this drive when it started is guys we're in bounds stay in bounds i don't care if you're a freshman or a senior the quarterback is is, is responsible to continue to say that on this drive in the huddle in between plays coming in and out Talking to his team, letting them know the importance of staying in bounds to keep the clock moving. Second and three. They gave Georgia Tech a free time out there. Right back to Baker, the freshman. He's going to be a yard shy of the first down. We have third down coming up. And Tech uses its second timeout. They have one remaining with 3.05 to go. K. Michael Hall made the tackle on that last play. Sports Center's on the way as soon as we're done. Could be looking at overtime. We are looking at a very good game here in the ACC tonight. In regulation, 17-14. North Carolina State leads. Georgia Tech is one timeout remaining. We have a third and about a yard coming up here. Difference in the game is three. We had two missed field goals by Georgia Tech's reliable until this season kicker, Travis Bell. Watch these. Look at his holder. His holder's head is moving. It's almost pulling his body back. Mike Black, who works up here in the booth with us. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen Black. He's so excited, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Woo! Yep. Black, you need a headset. Mike, Mike Black works up in the booth with us on our broadcast, and Mike uh, was a kicker at Boise State. A very good kicker there. there. He gave him the elbow. Third in the yard, you go back to T.J. Williams, your best player. You let him block on the toss. Oh, what a play by Jarris Wilkinson. Wow. Fourth down, they're going to have to punt it. The captain, the linebacker, came through. Man who has his degree and is working on a second one. Mike, we just talked about T.J. Williams and how next year you're going to be seeing him making plays on Sunday. We're well, going to also see this middle linebacker, Jarris Wilkinson. We've been watching him play for the last three years. He played a defensive end, of course, last year linebacker. 
love his movement and instincts and how he prowls in the middle of this defense for John Tenuta. NC State going to try to maximize the time they take down here on the clock. Georgia Tech electing to hold on to its remaining timeout. State will take a timeout here, probably with 2.14 or 15 left on the clock. They'll sneak down to 14. They're able to stop it. So they don't lose the five yards on this uh, exchange of possession with the punt. So Calvin Johnson, Reggie Ball, and P.J. Daniels are the guys who are going to have to make the big plays. In all likelihood, if Georgia Tech is able to extend this game, it's Pat Clark back deep to receive. The punt by Duraney gets it away. Good hang time. All Pat can do is make the fair catch at the 24. So Clark gets it back for the offense there with 2.06 and one timeout for Reggie Ball. If you're Reggie Ball, this is what you want. The, 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 these are the opportunities that you look forward to having. When you're in the backyard, I don't care what sport it is you play. Baseball, bottom of the ninth, you want the, the, your, the bat in your hands. If you're playing basketball, how many times do you hear kids playing on the playground, three, two, one, throwing up the last shot? If you play quarterback or you play offense, you want to be on the field with the game on the line and 2.06 to go with a chance to go either tie it or win it. He's 18 of 47 tonight. Drive starts just shy of the 25. Has to step up and go. First down across the 35 to the 39. Gain of 14. Less than two minutes remaining. Clock stops, of course, with a first down. But, Mike, again, that, th that's what happens when you play man coverage underneath. Again, with a spread look, things open up, and there's nobody left in the middle, and a quarterback can take off and pick up valuable yardage. Here is Reggie throwing incomplete as he tries to shoot it out to Pat Clark again. He's going to have to make some plays with his arm. Here he is making plays with his feet. All three receivers are manned up by the secondary from North Carolina State. The linebackers clear out. They cover the backs. There's nobody left in the middle to account for the quarterback until the free safety comes up 15 yards later for the first down. But he's not going to be able to scramble all the way down the field. He's going to have to make a play with his arm. Johnson's in the slot, Mike. Calvin Johnson on second and ten, trying to make a move. Ball looking his way. Reggie scrambling, running for the sideline, out of bounds. Take him to the 43. Third and about five coming up. 101 seconds remaining in regulation. If you're thinking about, okay, well, just even though Bell has struggled tonight, where ballpark, where does Travis Bell, where does Georgia Tech have to get to at least get in the range? As a sophomore, his his career long is 47. So you got to at least get to the 30 to have a chance for Bell to turn his night around after missing the two kicks earlier. He's never attempted a 50-yard field goal. But before he faces the pressure, and the holder and snapper as well, Holder hasn't done a good job. Got to pick this up. 21st third down conversion attempt tonight. They just get the playoff in time. Ball going for Calvin Johnson, who adjusts. Did he stay in bounds? No. Out of bounds. Incomplete. We have fourth down and a long five coming up with 134 to go. That time they moved Calvin Johnson out to the outside. We've seen him so much in the slot. <laughs> and Reggie Ball, even though he was covered, said... I'm going to take a chance and put it up to my guy. He's out of bounds. Great call. Field judge Chris Brown right on it. Mike, he was he was blanketed. But did you see how he had, he found the ball, adjusted, and came back to the football? And A.J. Davis continued to go on. That's why I don't care how many people on, with the game on the line are covering Calvin Johnson at the top. You have to throw him the football here. Here we go. Fourth and a long five. Three receivers, two backs. They stay in the block. Ball looking Johnson, throwing Johnson. Calvin's got it first down at the 44. Marcus Hudson in coverage ended up out of bounds. It was getting so physical. Calvin Johnson came back in to keep the drive alive. I'm really surprised, Mike, that even though Hudson's qualified and he's a great player, that they didn't bring a second guy up closer to the line of scrimmage. He had help. But it was, te it was 10 to 12 yards down the field. That's fourth down in the game on a line. You've got to give him help up closer. Ball 
Got away from Manny Lawson, dove to the 39. Clock will run here with a minute and 15 remaining. They're at the 39, so they're closing in on field goal range. Closing in on field goal range and the importance of saving the one timeout just in case they have to call the timeout to get Bell in position. This time they move Johnson up to the top of the screen. Just get enough guys on the line of scrimmage to make it legal. Ball, tough catch, great catch. Pat Clark, 31-yard line, 52 seconds. Clark stops to move the chains on the first down. Like to see another guy this time in a slot. It's Pat Clark, who we haven't called his name out tonight very often. The ball is high, but Clark climbs the ladder. Man coverage against Jimmy Sutton makes the catch. Now, Mike, they're close to being within range for Bell. Ball, screen, P.J. Daniels room, 25, 20. Daniels bowls over a tackler to the 16. First down, 39 seconds left. It's always interesting to me to see a hurry-up offense. You think the offense is at a disadvantage, but it's the defense that often is confused. And that's what's happened right now as North Carolina State is in a panic and they have to call a yeah. timeout. They've been on the field for so many plays, too. One of their best defensive players, Mario Williams, the defensive end, came out a couple of times. They're exchanging players, so they have fresh bodies. So State stops the clock. 39 seconds remaining. It's the 90th offensive play for Georgia wow. Tech. And they've got 14 points. With all due respect to Travis Bell, if I'm Chan Gailey, I'm going in to win this in regulation. And if I have to take a few chances and try to get the ball up in the air to my go-to guy, then I'm going to have to do that. Remember, he has the two misses, both coming from the left hash. His holder bailed out on him on a couple of those. Very good finish. Another tight ACC game. Glad to be here in the ACC. The one thing, Mike, I'll tell you is if they're unable to score a touchdown to win this in regulation, at the very least, keep the ball in the middle of the field. Yeah, right. Don't get anywhere close to that left hash. I told you, kickers are head cases, with the exception of Mike Black up here. Most kickers are head cases. <laughs> For a guy that's missed two from the left hash, don't get anywhere close to the left hash. We welcome those of you who watched the baseball game, Braves 1-7-1. We've had a much better game here tonight. Just three miles north of uh, Turner Field in Atlanta. 17-14 NC State. NC State jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Georgia Tech came back to take a 14-10 lead. And then this, the second touchdown, an 80-yarder by the senior Brian Clark. Put State back on top by three. Two missed field goals by Travis Bell. One early, one on the most recent drive. Both wide right from the left hash. Very short field goals. That's why there's pressure on Georgia Tech to get it in. Tech's 3-1 and one on the edge of the top 25 at number 24. North Carolina State looking to avoid a third loss in the ACC. Sports Center has the wrap-up of everything today coming up as soon as we're done. Calvin Johnson, one of the best receivers in the country out there. Ball's going to run. 15 to the 10. Going forward. He's down at the three-yard line. 32 seconds. A first down converted. Ball's going to take the final Georgia Tech timeout. Chan Gailey will manage these last few snaps here to make a decision because with 32 seconds you still have every option offensively at your disposal it's easy for me and you to sit up here and say why do you use the time out there the downs are irrelevant first down the clock stops you spike the ball now you're at second down you save the timeout the downs aren't going to become a big issue the time is is it becomes an issue in trying to get the ball into the end zone. I'm surprised that, that uh, Chan Gailey elected to call the time out there. Again, I, I know it's it's emotional when you get Johnson, the big receiver, back into the boundary. Daniels is the back. Ball fakes the handoff, looks for Johnson up top. Intercepted. Did he intercept it? Yes, he did. And North Carolina State is going to win the game. Unbelievable interception. Johnson has a big play. Flags are down. We have NC State coaches and oh players gosh. running all over the field. Oh, my gosh. You my go to your best player to win the game. Johnson goes up on a design play. 
right in and out of his hands and they'll make sure that he was in bounds and made the pick to review the play just in case Garland Heath comes up with the INT that watch Calvin goes. Johnson fight Mike through one defender to, through a second defender he goal. makes that catch almost defender. every single time you every put it up goal. in the air yeah. for some reason the ball came back up after he, he had both hands on the football Great effort by Hudson to come in and hit him Great from underneath. Play. Yeah. But still, you're so accustomed to seeing Calvin Johnson with his hands secure that ball. But a great, great play by Hudson. And then how about the interception by Garland Heath? He's excited. Oh. So to a knee, and that will do it. What a ball. A game. season saver for North Carolina State to get to two and two. Their first win over a Division I A team. And we built up Calvin Johnson all night. He may be one of the best receivers in the country. Bell missed the two field goals. But Georgia Tech worked it right back to the edge. They were ready to knock it in. North Carolina State's defense on the field. The whole second half, essentially, makes the one big play at the end. Our Wrangler five-star player of the game, Brian Clark, both touchdowns for North Carolina Funny State. Funny how things have a way of turning themselves around. North Carolina State has had so many tough losses. This time they catch a break, get a win, and we'll see them again next Thursday night. Yes, we will. We'll see them next Thursday against the Clemson Tigers. What a very exciting, tight ACC game. Clark did two touchdowns. Johnson made the big plays all night, but the last play may have been made by the state defense, Marcus Hudson, knocking Calvin Johnson away. Thanks for Rob Stone being with us this week. Filling in for Aaron Andrews with Kirk Herb. Street, Mike Tarico. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.